Hello, hello, hello. Testing, testing, making sure the audio is okay. Hopefully you can all see me. Wait for people to turn up. We're starting in a few minutes. Yes. But okay, it looks like you can see and hear me, so I'll give it a few minutes for people to arrive. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Dee -dee -dee. I don't know where you might be watching this, but if you're watching this anywhere other than YouTube, and you want to join in the live chat, which is what this is all about, uh, just go to youtube.com forward slash model making guru it's on there and you can watch there yes going in the live chat or if you're watching somewhere else click on the little youtube icon in the bottom right of the player it'll take you to the, to the stream with the live chat a few minutes for people to turn up Ooh, hi scott how you doing fella first in Beautiful day here. I've got the window open. Crack the window open. Got nice outside smells coming up. Hey, Lee. Uh, nice outside smells coming in. There's a blackbird outside somewhere, twittering away, which I love. Love the sound of blackbirds. Is my audio okay? Am I a bit too quiet or a bit too loud? Do let me know. I don't know because I'm not got it streaming while I'm streaming. If you know what I mean. But let me know if my audio is quiet. If the picture's a bit wonky, whatever. Just waiting for folks to turn up. Hi Phil, how you doing matey? Just doing the sort of few minutes waiting. Before we go live. Ooh, hi David, how you doing fella? We shall begin in a moment. Hi, Ghost Lyle. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Yep, yeah, Lee says sounds good. Looks good. Sounds good to me, says Phil. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Get going in a minute. Now, as always, I do have on standby, on a hot standby, my enormous mug of coffee. Yes, it's, it's much needed. Got to tell you, though, one downside to having a big manly beard, well, downside to having the camera mounted to a lamp that's mounted to the desk, because I can't put my coffee down without... Wobbling the camera, sorry about that. A uh, big manly beard problem is that <sighs> you take a big swig of coffee, your beard gets full of coffee. Got a wet face for about five minutes. Hence tissue is needed. I don't know. <sighs> Just give it a minute or two, let more people turn up, and then we'll get cracking. <coughs> De -de -de. Rather amusingly today, Mum found this in the on in the hallway downstairs. It's uh, an aquila, an imperial eagle. From Warhammer, and it's just downstairs in the hall, like nowhere near where I do my model making. <sighs> five minutes in, nice under five minutes, and already had a Mr. Burns. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Patrick Hirabovsky, sorry, Harabovsky, says, Hello, I have a question. What is your opinion on a water revolution? Well, funnily enough, I actually have a new water revolution with a bit of dust on it uh, very very good absolutely brilliant brush it's a 0.5 mil so it's good for spraying big things it's also solvent safe so you can put your enamels and oils through it and lacquers and things no problem at all um, yeah they are really really good the only thing I don't like about it is it's a button trigger and I struggle with button triggers which is why I've got the uh, neo free water as well as a smaller airbrush but also as something with it's got a trigger grip on it so it's TRN1 so I find I use most of the stuff I'll do on the TRN1 on the on the Neo. And then when I need to do big things like anything really thick, like primer or metallic paints or anything that solvent that needs solvents in it, I'll use my Revolution just because it's yeah a bit uh, a bit easier on the thicker paints. The things I can't use it for long because my fingers can't cope with the button. Good morning from Virginia Fox. Beard problems. Hey, John. Yes. At least, yep, I'm growing my beard out and made the mistake of eating barbecue ribs. Oh, yeah. Tell you what, though, mate, you should, um, you should 
You just wait till you eat like a really, really hot curry. Yeah, because it stays for hours. Hey, Jacob. Good, brilliant. What until you pull the hell out of trying to eat? Not fun. Yes. Yeah. It's like when you take a mouthful of food and like one of your moustache hairs gets stuck in your teeth and you're like, ah, 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 and it's like still attached to your face and it's horrible. You have to kind of, you have to kind of develop a whole new way of eating that involves opening your mouth as wide as possible and, ah, uh, yeah. <sighs> right. Okay, now that I've got the chat on my desk, but it's really, because of the way I've got the camera mounted to a, an angle poised lamp, it's really hard for me to see, so. Apologies, anybody, if I miss your questions. I will try and keep an eye on the chat, but obviously while I'm painting, I'm going to be ignoring the chat completely. So if you do have a question or anything you want me to answer, please put it in massive, big, fat capital letters so I can't possibly miss Well, so I can't, hopefully can't miss it. Uh, I'll be more likely to see it. But don't forget, there is super chat as well. If the little dollar sign at the bottom, if you want a comment to really stand out, it'll be in a big colored box and I'll see it a mile away. I'll see it pop up on screen. That way I can't possibly miss your comment. But if not, just stick it in big capital letters and I might see it. Uh, Patrick Hrabowski says, thank you so much. I just come back to modeling and I love your videos. You have brilliant weathering techniques. Thank you. We'll see you a bit tonight. Uh, Gabriel says, or Gabriel Marcias says, or take a bite of your mustache. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. The thing is, my mustache is still at the stage where it's not long enough at the front to sort of push it back along my lips so it gets out of the way. It's still just dangling down like a walrus. Just... The downside of growing a manly beard is you have to go through the I look like I'm homeless phase, which is not brilliant. Combing your moustache before you eat helps, but not all the time. No, because the hairs are too short. They don't get out of the way. They spring back. It's annoying. Yes, welcome to Beard Talk with Fox from Model Making Guru. We will discuss beards and drink manly cups of coffee all day. Ah. Uh, right, should we do some work? <sighs> so, the plan for today is I have the Fallout miniatures, the Wasteland Warfare miniatures, which are absolutely brilliant. Uh, for those just joining... Uh, or because this will be up on YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to be painting the bases from my three facelet, faceland? Facelet, I said Facebook then. Facebook Wasteland Warfare. What? <sighs> Fallout Wasteland Warfare a tabletop game miniatures from Modifius Entertainment, who very kindly sent me these miniatures to paint up and review. Uh, and there will be more, because I said they're going to send me more as uh, more releases come out, so stay tuned. But I had great fun. I've painted the Super Mutant, who's got the two weapons, the dual wheeling, the two uh, pipe rifles. Puppy Dog, of course, has been painterated. Uh, and I got Nora in my little pack of dudes and dudettes. So I didn't get Nate, I got Nora, so I've painted up Nora. You're looking pretty hardcore. They're all beautiful little sculpts. Lovely detail. They're resin, all resin figures. Beautiful details on the Super Mutant. Um, dog meat is fantastic, although the, the fur detail on him is a little, a little sort of faint. Could be better. Uh, and Nora's really, really nice. The only downside to Nora is the gun is a bit, on mine is a bit rough, the detail. It didn't come out quite right, so... But other than that, you're not going to notice when it's on the tabletop. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Ray's, hi again, where did you buy the air paint? Thanks. Uh, what do you mean by air paint, Jacobs? Explain what you mean by air paint. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Uh, I know Citadel do a range of air paints. They're just thin Citadel paints. I don't use those. Uh, when I'm airbrushing, I tend to use either Ammo by Mig or Tamiya paints, just because they're what I've got. I've got some Vallejo paints as well that I haven't tried in the airbrush. No, I have actually. They're quite good as well. But if you mean something else, just clarify what you mean by air paint. Nice, just in time for the show, says Aviad. Yeah, well, you're about five minutes late, but we'll let you off. Uh, you're Lucky Fox with the Turkish barber around your way. Oh, yeah, he is. He's, uh, I've been to him. He's actually, for those that don't know where I live, the town just near me, about five minutes away, there's a Turkish barber. Uh, and he's got his own Facebook page and everything, YouTube channel. And he's a really nice guy. And I, I've been in there once. I went in because I was going to, I was actually going to the Warhammer store. And I was like, I had to wait half an hour because uh, Chris, the manager, had gone on his lunch. I'm like, oh. So I popped in. I said, can you trim my beard a bit? He went, yeah, yeah, no problem. So we trimmed it around. We had a nice chat. He even, he even offered me some uh, Turkish tea, which is really, really nice. And he said, do you want sugar in it? I said, well, does it normally have sugar in it? He said, no, no, it's usually very sweet. It's very sweet tea. Uh, but if you want sugar, you know, because you're a white guy and you're not Turkish, I'm like, no, I'll do it without sugar. Go, go for it. And it was really nice. Came a little glass, little glass teacup, like it, traditional. Really nice. So yeah, it's really nice. Uh, you'll heard uh, my area is hit or miss depending on the areas. If to your game, you're gonna get a trim or have to start from scratch. Says John about his beard. Yeah, 
Well, I basically went to the barbers and said, can you kind of trim my beard a bit at the sides and make me look less homeless? He said, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, Phil East, I need a popular YouTube channel for awesome freebies like this. I just need a camera and a personality now. Yes. I don't know. I've got the camera. <laughs> I will be honest, though. Um, if you look at who, Mo uh, and this is Mobius then, who Modifius has sent these out to, there are some really tiny channels that have been doing these, like guys with 50 subscribers and like 10 views. So I think it's more just if, you know, they'll send them. It's a very good marketing strategy. Send them to everybody. Don't just send it to the popular YouTubers. Send stuff to everybody because you never know who'll get popular in the future. And at the end of the day, if you get 300 people with five followers each making videos, when somebody does a YouTube search, you're going to get 300 videos coming up. If you send it just to five popular people, you can get five popping up. So a good way to like, you know, promote buzz and get the word out. Send it to as many as you can. Carpet bomb media. Uh, I mean airbrush, but sorry, thanks. Uh, says Jacob. Uh, oh, where did I get my airbrush from? Uh, uh, emodels. Emodels.co.uk, my sponsors. Ha -ha. Uh, I got... I get a lot of my stuff. I, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't get everything from eModels. There's some stuff that eModels don't sell. Um, like, you know, they do sell Gumpla now, but there's a lot of Gumpla they don't sell, or things like Gundam decals and stuff. And there are things I get from everywhere. I go for everywhere, but I think I got my airbrushes from eModels uh, over, you know, a good few years ago now. Uh, hi guys, first time joining the Fox live stream, says Andre Timothy. Hello, welcome. Welcome to two hours of me drinking coffee from my enormous mug and probably not doing much work at all. Mm, enormous mug. I was saying before, it's a beautiful day outside today here in sunny northwest England. It is uh, reasonably warm, sunny. I can see the daffodils in the garden from here. The blackbird outside singing. And that can mean only one thing. It's time to shut up, Fox, and get on with some work. Yeah. So, uh, again, to anybody that's just joined, if you want to ask me a question while I'm painting, I probably won't see the chat. So do put your questions in big fat capital letters. Uh, or if you want to use the super chat option, the little dollar sign underneath the chat window, uh, do feel free. Uh, it's completely optional. It just puts your, your comment or your question in a big box and I can't possibly miss it. I'll see it appear on screen. And if you are watching not on YouTube, you're watching somewhere else and you want to join in the chat, just click on the little YouTube icon at the bottom of the player and you'll be on the YouTube page with the actual chat. Right, let's do some jolly old work, shall we? Uh, I can't get the camera any closer, unfortunately, I don't think. I did try. Uh, I need my space helmet of seeing. Ugh. <clears throat> but this will be the first time uh, you actually see me doing some work. Well, yeah, well, let's clarify that a bit. It's the first time you actually see me do some painting on camera, like properly live and everything. Because I tend not to be able to do a lot of painting picture painting. Oh, I know what I didn't do. Oh, I didn't redo my wet palette. Oh, fudge. Fudge. Oh, well. Fudge, indeed. I meant to redo my wet palette. Oh couple of days old now I'll have to just survive survive with my existing wet palette which has got a bit of paint on it so what we're gonna do well all these guys come on effectively like urban bases like concrete and flagstones and curbs uh, Nora's got a lot of debris and stuff on there with some planks uh, and dog meat is on sort of like a curbside pavement with a bit of debris. So what we're going to do, we're going to kind of paint them all fairly similarly, sim similarly, similarly. <coughs> and we're going to keep it fairly simple. When I painted these on camera, I did it from an absolute beginner point of view. Somebody that's just bought these miniatures, maybe never painted miniatures before, doesn't really know how to do it, and is just keen to get things on the table and play in the game, but doesn't want to use unpainted miniatures. So we're going to keep it fairly straightforward. Uh, now, sadly, because this is a live stream, there'll be no amusing little uh, paint name pop-ups in the corner. So, sorry about that. So, we're going to start off with a base coat for these uh, bases. To start off with a simple grey colour, and we're going to use Mechanicus Standard Grey. Yes, Mechanicus Standard Grey. So, uh, a lot of you probably know what I'm about. To, uh, we'll kind of, this will be real beginner stuff, so... Apologies if it's all a bit basic and simplified. Uh, I do tend to have one brush specifically for getting paint out of the pots, just an old uh, shade brush. I do recommend you do that, just because you tend to get paint out uh, and leave the brush to the side and it gets clogged up and knackered and horrible. You don't want to use a nice brush for this, because you want to keep nice brushes away from all the extra pa excess paint all the time. Now we've got paint on my wet palette. Uh, if you don't know a wet palette, uh, you can buy them if you really want to. Or you can make your own, get a sandwich tub or some kind of 
plastic container with a seal on it, like an airtight seal. This is the lid from a, a sandwich tub. Some kitchen roll, kitchen tissue, and a piece of parchment paper, not greaseproof paper because it's waterproof, not tracing paper. It has to be cooking kitchen parchment paper. Cover it in water, drain the water off, the tissue stays damp, the water can sort of partly get through the, the parchment paper and it keeps your paints wet and moist for longer. It just make, it keeps them workable for longer. So we're just going to get some water in here, not too much, just enough to give us a thin bit and a thick bit. You meet, uh, you meet dog meat at the rocket, yes. They actually do um, diorama set of a red rocket garage. Do go to medifius.com and check them out. There's some brilliant figures. There's tons and tons of figures in this range. Right, now I've got to find out where to put my wet palette so I can paint. Uh, let's have a look. What's the chat doing before I get going? John Robertson, Jacob Ray's. Most good hobby shops have a selection of airbrushes and paints. Just some research on what you're looking for and you should be good. Okay, Phil, see you in a bit, mate. He's been summoned. Probably she who must be obeyed. Um, yes, oh, well, that's a good point, actually. Um, see, I've got my visor on now to see what I'm painting, and I can't read the chat because it's too close. Uh, yes, Jacob, if you you're asking about airbrushes earlier on, just in case you don't know, there are different types of airbrush, and you want to know exactly what type of airbrush you want to get. If you're just getting into airbrushing, and I know I've explained this a million times before, but it's always worth explaining. Airbrushing is one of those things that many people think is a dark, mysterious art. And in reality, not. It's actually very easy, but it has a very steep learning curve. But thankfully, the learning curve may be steep, but it's fast. It doesn't take long to learn everything. It's a lot to learn. So... What I always say is, this paint is too thin, I always say that. What I always say is, we need a bigger brush. Let me get a bigger brush. I'm trying out my uh, Army Painter Wargamer brushes today. I tried some out the other day as well. I've been using the Wargamer Regiment brush for a while, I absolutely adore it. But I've been trying some of the other ones. What have we got? We've got the, what's this one? This is the Monster. Monster, Monster. Slightly bigger, might be faster. But yes, there are different types of airbrush. So the trick is, when you're learning airbrush, because of its very steep but very quick learning curve, if at any point something is more complicated than it needs to be, then it can very easily put you off, make you put the airbrush back in the box and never pick it up ever again. Very easy to get off by something that is not your fault and not a question of a lack of skill for example an, ex an example of things that can put people off and terrify them and this happens to everybody the first time you clean your airbrush if it's a normal button airbrush and not a, a trigger one the button the trigger the trigger button will fall out and you'll panic and you'll be like oh I broke my airbrush you haven't just you haven't yet figured out how airbrushes work there's lots of little things that to the uninitiated or uninitiated even might put you off and you'll never try it again to that end it's absolutely worth going for an airbrush that gives you the easiest time possible so there are many different airbrushes to go for and it's a question of personal preference but my guidelines would be if you're looking at getting an airbrush and you might want to write this down uh, the simple guidelines would be, if you're an absolute beginner and you want an easy time of learning, make sure it is, first of all, uh, gravity fed. What that means is, the paint cup is on top of the airbrush. It's not on the side, and it's not a little bottle underneath. The reason for this is, A, it can work with better lower pressures. It's better at lower pressures, so if you're just starting out and you may be using air cans rather than a compressor, It'll work better. And two, they're, easy, they're the easiest to clean out as well. The ones with bottles are a pain in the bum. Bottles need because you've got to really clean that thing out before you can put more colours in and it takes ages to change colours and it's a right ball ache. And they're not very good. They require very high pressure to work because it's physically having to suck the paint up from the bottle. 
They're called siphon feed. You don't want those. Um, you want gravity feed. You can get them with a cup on the side. They're called... Um, oh, no, actually, sorry. Siphon feed is the cup on the side. Suction feed is the cup on the bottom, and they suck. You want gravity fed, which is the cup on the top. Second of all, you absolutely want a dual action airbrush. Uh, and it will, when you look at an airbrush listing, it will tell you what kind of airbrush it is. You want dual action. Just one side for a minute. There will be hairdryer action today, by the way. Uh, dual action. There's two types of airbrush. There's single action and there's dual action. Single action means that when you pull the trigger or press the button, paint and air come out at the same time, and you cannot adjust the flow of paint to air. So it's basically just on or off. Dual action means you have separate control over the airflow and the paint flow. So you can, for example, just have air coming out of the airbrush and no paint. Or you can start the air going and then gradually increase the amount of paint that comes out until it's where you want it. And you want, that's what you want. You want dual action because there'll be times when you need to have very, very little paint coming out certain effects so you want a dual action airbrush so you can you can vary the amount of paint this is tricky you don't want to get paint on his little paws uh, you want to be able to vary the amount of paint so make sure it's gravity fed dual action uh, last uh, well another thing and it is an option they usually come with either a trigger a button trigger like a little mushroom trigger on the top of the airbrush or an actual trigger trigger, like a gun trigger. Uh, I find a, the gun trigger, the trigger type trigger, I'm saying trigger a lot here, uh, more flexible than a button. But if you've got any kind of limitations with your hands, any kind of, you know, if you've got arthritis or if joints or anything like that, you might find a trigger brush better because if you have any kind of issues with your hands, button triggers can get very uncomfortable very fast. Especially if you're spraying for like, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. Some of my paint sessions can go on for like two hours. And I'd be crippled in, and in crippling pain by the time that finished. So a trigger brush, which is that. Let me see if I can get my Neo out without destroying everything. That's a trigger airbrush. Like that. That's my Iwata Neo trigger. It's, I find far superior. More controllable. And you can, you can get the paint where you want it and lock that amount, basically. I just find it a lot more useful. Uh, and last of all, last of all, don't be tempted to go onto the Amazons or the Ebays. As an absolute beginner, don't be tempted to go on the Amazons and the Ebays and buy the, the cheapest Chinese knockoff airbrush that comes with the compressor that you can find. Uh, because they're not made to the same exacting standards as proper branded like Badger or Water or Pash or any of those. Um, and more often than not, you'll have issues like it won't spray properly, it won't give you a good spray pattern, it will have or seals that don't last very long, and it will cause problems that, as a beginner, you won't know aren't your fault. You get this cheap, knackered, this cheap crappy airbrush, and it can't spray in a straight line, or it sprays a really crappy spray pattern, a dead messy. You won't know it's the brush that's the problem. You'll think it's your spraying that's terrible, and you'll put that brush down, you'll think, I can't do airbrushing, and you'll never try it again. So if you're an absolute beginner, starting out, I don't recommend cheap, crappy Chinese knockoff airbrushes. If you know what you're doing with an airbrush, this is tricky to get down here. If you know what you're doing with an airbrush, then little cheap, crappy airbrushes are actually quite good, because they come in handy for all the rough and tumble jobs that you don't want to put your expensive airbrush through, like spraying crappy paint or horrible primers or solvents and things they come in handy worth having in your arsenal but as an absolute beginner don't go near them because again it's all about the learning curve you add things to your arsenal that just make it harder to learn you put that brush down and you'll never try it again and you'll think you can't do it right puppy dog your paws are really hard to get behind there's some paint on his paws here I think don't think I have yet, but there's the base coat on that one. When you're painting base coats on bases, always paint the figure first because 
if you watch when you paint the figure, if you watch when I painted these, I was getting paint on the bases because you're painting feet and things. So always paint the figure first and then paint the base around them and just go carefully and you'll be fine. Uh, right, what's the chat doing? Do, do, do. Pineapple says Ghost Lyle. Mmm, pineapple. Jacob Ray says message retracted. Ooh, I don't know what that was. Question about your ring, is it a tungsten ring? No, it's an Argos. This is some cheap ring from Argos. <laughs> I wanted a simple plain ring, but they didn't have any that fit, so I just had to get one with a crappy black thing in it. Uh... John Robertson says, yes, sir, just to make sure when you paint, some brands need to be thinned and some don't. Yeah, if you are starting out, it's worth getting, if you want the really easiest time, what you can do with airbrushing, you can do is get uh, paints that are designed for airbrushes. So you'd have to thin them like uh, the Vallejo Air Range Model Air. They're actually pre-thinned, so you don't actually have to worry about that. But the golden rule is if you're thinning a paint, whatever brand it is, every paint has a different requirement for thinner. And even different colours in that same brand have different requirements. So don't overthink it. Don't worry about percentages and ratios. Just make it this consistency of skim milk. Uh, and that's about what you need for your airbrush. General rule of thumb is the, the thicker the paint, the higher your pressure. Not all the time, but most of the time. If you get your paint to the consistency of skim milk, then you can probably work at between 15 and 20 PSI on your compressor. It's a thicker paint or a metallic paint, which comes with big metal flakes and therefore is technically thicker. You're trying to push more stuff through the nozzle of your airbrush. You can go up to 20 PSI. Uh, sorry, 15 to 20 PSI for normal. 20 to 23, maybe 25 for primers and very thick paints. But it does depend on your compressor and your airbrush and the quality of your airbrush hose. So don't assume that's set in stone. Experiment. I'll come back to the chat in a moment when I've done this. I don't imagine this will take very long, by the way, folks. And I'm making this up as I go along, but I'm not actually planning this at all. I've just got out some colours that I think I might need. See how that goes. Yeah, when, you, when you're painting the base, after you've painted the figures, just be careful around the feet. Make sure you're using a good brush that's got a nice point on it. If you've not tried these uh, army painter brushes, I am adoring them. They're really nice quality. I've got the mega brush set, which comes with a bunch of brushes and a, um, a free Polinsky Sable detail brush, which is, I've not tried yet, but it looks quite nice. I have been using the Citadel brushes and they are very good. They just don't last very long. Even with, you know, proper cleaning and maintenance, they just don't, they tend to explode and lump out and it's not brilliant. But they're a good place to start. They're not the cheapest, but they are good. Paint, 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 painting, painting all the primer away. If I do get any paint on the feet or anything, I'll just <clears throat> go in and touch that up later. Or hide it with some shades and what weathering. We'll be putting shades on these, so if there are any little gaps. One of the reasons I spray it black is so that if I do miss anything on the base, it's not the end of the world because I'll be putting dark shades on here anyway. I'll just kind of blend in and hide away and look like shadow. That's, huh? <coughs> Excuse me, a little bit of a tickly cough today. And as always, because I'm on camera, the nose is running because, of course, it is. Right, let's see what the chat's doing while they're drying. Uh, do, 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 do. Hello, Fox, says Mike Hornsey. Hi, Mike. Uh, who else has come in? And if you use air cans, get a bowl of warm water to place the can into when you're using it. It'll keep the can pressure the same from start to finish, says John Robertson. Yes, if you're using air cans instead of a compressor. Do keep in mind, uh, air cans, the only two downsides to air cans are they're, they're easy, they're quick, they're not cheap. It is cheaper to use to pay for a compressor in the long run. It's a more of a forward investment. Um, but the thing with air cans is... As the air can empties, they lower pressure, so your pressure from the airbrush goes down. So just do keep that in mind. 
Uh, air cans are great to start off before you go and splash on a on a, a compressor. But ideally, you want to be planning to work your way up to getting a compressor eventually. Uh, Citadel paints have a different taste. Yes, whatever you do, don't ever lick a brush that's got Agrax Earthshade on it. That is the worst flavour in the world. Uh, Andre Timothy, I found Vallejo Mecha Colour had some nice cappuccino smell to it. Yeah, I like, um, where is it? We got it here. Lamian Medium, or Labia Mermaids, as you more rightly know it, um, smells just like applesauce. It's fantastic. It really does smell like applesauce. I love it. I could drink it if I wasn't if I was an idiot. But I'm an idiot. Uh, I've got airbrush that do the split spit. Been using it for weathering like mud. Kupik uh, says that. Uh, yeah, if it's spitting, it just means there's crap in there. You've got stuff gunked in it. You want to give it a real good thorough clean out. It just means there's paint gunked up inside, or if you've used it for, say, clear varnishes, there's something in there gunked up inside, and it's getting in the way. It's getting, it's making a partial seal around the nozzle and the needle. So uh, you want to just give it a thorough good clean. Make sure you take it apart and strip it down. Give it a good clean with your, with the airbrush cleaner. If it's solvent safe, run some isopropyl alcohol through it, uh, and possible just like fill the cup with some airbrush cleaner blast a little bit of it through the airbrush and then just let it sit there for a while because then the, the the airbrush cleaner will have worked its way through the nozzle and everything else the needle we're cleaning out all the internals and also get yourself some airbrush cleaning brushes the tamir ones are really good doesn't matter which ones you get get yourself some airbrush cleaning brushes to give it a real good scrub inside it just means there's stuff inside some people use ultrasonic cleaners to do their airbrushes. I've got one, it never really worked. I couldn't get it to work. And you can't just put anything in them because you have to be very careful putting anything that's flammable in them because it heats them up. And you know, you can if you do it wrong or leave it for too long, you can actually start all kinds of fires and things. You fill it full of very combustible alcohols. Probably going to explode and die. Well, really. We're just going over with a second coat for this grey colour. I'm not being neat, by the way, you know, so I'm not being particularly careful. I'm just getting the paint on there. Come back to the chat in a second. Ding, painting, painting. Second coat, have I missed a bit there? I've missed a bit there. Oh my lord. No paint on that at all. Excuse me, sir. Why don't you go between your legs? Who are him done? Uh, who was next? Puppy dog was next. Bit of water. Notice I'm using different brushes, by the way. I'm using this monster brush for the sort of general areas, but when I'm getting around puppy dog's feet, I'm being a bit more careful. I'm using a smaller brush. But for this second coat, it's just really getting rid of any patchiness. I'm not doing any intricate painting on this bit. I can just stick with the monster brush. We got the heating turned off today and the windows open is very nice. I do like spring. Spring's like the best bits of summer but without the excessive sweating and body odour. And discomfort when you're trying to get to sleep and you can't because it's like a million degrees and you're just made of moisture. Spring is kind of the best, best either or part there. Something else about basing as well, uh, it's always best to put your figures on the bases before you paint them. Two reasons, first of all, if you paint them all first and then you try and glue them to a base with super glue, you might mess up the paint job or any kind of glue, you'll probably make a mess of the paint job. Uh, and second of all, if you haven't got like a grippy thing like this or some corks or anything else, at the very least you've got the base to hold on to while you paint the figure. So always base your miniatures if you can. Come back to the chat in a second. The only downside with doing these painting things, I'm suddenly realising, as this is my first proper live stream painting session, I can't look at the chat. It's not like when I'm doing decals where I can keep an eye on the chat. I can't. I've got to keep doing this. So. Apologies if there's any dead air going on. Yep. Taken care of. Her paint was quite thick, so there wasn't a lot to cover. Let's 
not her done for the moment. If you're wondering what that noise is, I've got my little water thing here on the side. It's just one of the Citadel ones, so I'm just rattling the brush off in the uh, in the water. Right. What is the magical chat doing? Let's have a look. Uh, Aviad Madar says, honestly, just grab a Badger 105 for your first airbrush. 70 plus books or so. Perfect first airbrush. Yeah, Badgers are very good. Badgers, uh, the Awatas are fantastic. If, you, if it's your very first airbrush, the Neo is like 40 to 50 quid. And it's an absolute joy to pull apart and clean because it's so simple. Uh, but the Badgers are very good. Tony Blackwell. Hi, Tony. Jared B, I like how you clean off your brush, just beat the devil out of it. Yeah, it's a little bit of Bob Ross going on. It's like, you know, a little bit of Bob Ross and uh, Deadpool going on there. Uh, it makes it difficult when I'm painting late at night and the neighbours are probably trying to get sleep and all the canoes every now and then. Uh, afternoon all, says Chris Smith. Hey, Chris. Sonny, you don't get where I am. Where are you, Ghost Lyle? Are you like some God-forbidden part of the world where it's always raining? I'm going to get the hairdryer out for this now. Ugh. Always be careful when you're hairdrying resin figures. You don't want them, or any resin kit, you don't want it to get hot and then go out of shape. So a quick blast with the hairdryer. Try and keep the hair dry away from the microphone as best I can. Puppy dog. The super mutant. Yeah. Trick with using a hair dryer. There's nothing wrong with it. Like I say, resin figures. Be super careful because when you warm resin, it's flexible. Um, just keep the, the hairdryer and the model moving. Don't hold it in one place because that's when your models start to go a bit wonky and melty. So, quick look at the chat. Oh, Scotland. Oh, you're in Scotland. Hey, hey, well, I don't know. Scott and Orkney seems to get some nice weather every now and then. Coffee moment. <sighs> yep. By the same token, though, you might get not as much sunny weather, but you have much more gorgeous landscapes than rural Manchester. <coughs> yes. Right. So we've got the grey base down. Uh, next, we are going to do a little bit of dry brushing. There are some little details to paint, but I'll do the dry brushing on the stone textures first. For this, we need a small dry brush. Uh, small dry brush. So we're going to use this. And for this, we are going to use, what colour shall we use? Let's put the Mechanicus Standard Grey, I'll put it down somewhere. Right back there. I'm trying to force myself to be neat with things. Uh, we have... What do we want to use? We've got some Administratum Grey. That's just a light grey colour. Yeah, give it a good shake. This might do as a starting dry brush colour. Get the lid off. So again... Let's get some on the wet palette of wet palettes. I hope this is all in focus and everything. What am I doing on a wet palette? It's a dry brush, you idiot. Let's not do that. Hello. Oh, well, I might need it later. Right, so what you don't want to do is put on a wet palette because you want the paint to not be wet. Special. Special. Ed. I will get a piece of tissue or kitchen roll because we want to do this is a dry brush dry brush might be a bit small let me get a slightly bigger one yep I've got a large dry brush the split down the middle for some bizarre reason don't quite know why uh, if you've watched my stuff you'll have seen me do dry brushing a trillion times Get yourself your dry brush, get a little bit on the on the brush. This is where you can take paint straight from the pot and just work most of that off onto the piece of tissue. As Duncan would say, work it in amongst the bristles. All we're going to do is dry brush over these. Now the aim here 
to try ideally not just to catch the edges but to try and do some coloration in places as well I want some patchiness this is supposed to be concrete and stone so some patchy areas some lighter areas this probably won't come out on camera at all but never mind not a problem we'll go through a fair bit of paint doing this they have to reload quite often reloading and when it's on here and you can go in this is more of a heavy dry brush you can go in quite heavy with the paint you don't have to be dead gentle with this because you want that kind of stone texture I'm really just kind of scraping it along to try and pick out there's lots of lovely little sort of texture detail in the resin on the base that you can't normally see when it's either covered in primer or just a base color you can see here I'm kind of scribbing it around as well just to get some lighter areas again it's trying as best I can to avoid getting paint on the feet but well, there might be a little bit but it's going to be covered up and hidden with other things anyway so that's fine more <laughs> Nice light patch down this end here. Quick and easy way of getting some variation in tone as well. You can have light areas and dark areas. Edge there. You dry brush and try and use a large flat brush. If you can get one with an angled bristles as an angled tip as well, it makes it good for catching edges. There like that. Italy. I can hear my fan on my PC going 10 to the dozen. Let me just turn off one thing. <sighs> Had the YouTube stream page open at the same time. Didn't need that open. <laughs> Get a bit more grey on these bricks here. Just to make them stand out a little bit. Dry brushing isn't a neat process. You don't have to worry too much. Just get in there and get it done. Build up this light patch a bit more. Yep. You like this dry brush, it's very good. Okay, so that's that bit done. I'll do the same on the other two. Let's do puppy dog next. So Paul Lombardi, hello all, any stability yet? No, there's no stability, it's all painting today. There'll be no pointy objects of stability at all, I'm afraid. Tony Blackwell says scrubbity rather than stability. Well, there's still time, says Paul Lombardi. I could stab myself with my own finger or something. I, I pretty, I pretty much could. I'll just be honest about it and say yes. I probably will stab myself with like a brush or something. It probably will happen. Who am I kidding? Let's not mince words, bones. So we're just going over with the administratum grey. Again, same again, just to build up some light and dark patches to pick out the edges. Dry brushing is a couple of things. It can just be done for picking out edges when you can use it really lightly just by against an edge. Or you can get scrubby with it. And that's when you can build up some nice shading. If you're looking at like fades from one colour to another, the two best, well, there's three ways to do it. One is with an airbrush. Uh, which can give you a flawless blend. One is with glazes, so you're using very, very, very thin paint to build up colour slowly from one to the other. Or a third method is with dry brushing. And if you do it right, not easy, but if you do it right, you can get some really nice colour blends and fades with the dry brushing. Dog's a bit done there. A bit more, I think. Hello, he's gone. He's rolling off. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Puppy dog. Crazy canine. I love Dog Meat and Fallout 3, but I have to say Dog Meat and Fallout 4 is much better. Mostly because he can wear welding goggles and that's just so adorable. Right, so there's a bit there. Now I can see little bits of paint on the base that haven't been touched with the base colour because it was hard to get the brush in, but that's fine because we're going to do some shades and stuff that are going to hide those anyway. Uh, let's have a look. 
Miskatonic. Hey, Miskatonic University Podcast. I can't say that. Hey, Miskatonic University Podcast. What are those handles attached to the bases? I just got in. Sorry for the question that was likely already answered. And um, these are uh, wine bottle corks. I bought a pack of 50 from Amazon, uh, from eBay. They're just like little wine bottle corks. I just blew, blew tack the base onto them. Uh, I've got Nora on a Citadel base thing, which is this, this thing is really, really good. It's a fiver from Games Workshop, which is cheap for them. But the best bit is, I won't do it while she's in there. You can take this top bit off and there's a screw thread there, which means this bit can, can like, you can screw it into the bottom, say a vehicle, like a tank, drill a little hole and screw it in. And you've got something to hold your vehicle on. Really good. This bit expands out and it just happens. It doesn't fit the Super Mutant, but it does fit Nora. Um, but yeah, just a normal, like, cheap bag of 50 wine bottle corks. I think it listed them as champagne bottle corks, but yeah, you wouldn't get a champagne bottle cork with a plastic lid. Just wine corks. Um, they're really cool because you can either blue tack stuff to that end, or if you're doing it like these other guys, for example, these guys, this guy, uh, it's the same cork. All I did was drill a hole in his foot. Uh, I got a piece of cocktail stick. And I made one end point, I white glued or PVA glued the cocktail stick into the hole on his foot and then just jammed it into the cork and he's now got a little thing to be painted on. And he's got some paint on his cloak. Fantastic. Yeah, just corks. Corks have always been around for this kind of use. Dee -dee -dee. Scrub, 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 scrubbing. Scrubbing all the administrator grey on the model. It doesn't really scan that one, does it? Uh, do let me know if I'm sounding okay, but if I'm too quiet or too loud, if the picture's out of focus, let me know. I can adjust it. Unlike other live streams, when I'm streaming through OBS, I can actually adjust my camera focus and stuff. Which I can't normally do. So let me know. Uh, there's a great idea, Dan. They are Games Workshop painting handles. No, this one is. These are just cork, literally just corks. Cost me like about four quid on, on the Ebays. Uh, no, it was actually Amazon, sorry, not eBay. Just any corks will do. I just like them because they had the the, uh, the plastic bit on the end, so it's flat, so I can stand them up like that. Normal corks have got rounded tops and you can't. But for these guys, they're brilliant because you can just... Flat, see, so... <laughs> yeah. Work with what you can find. Ooh, bit much on there. <laughs> Do, 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 do. It reminds me when I first used a hairdryer when painting minis, wife woke up and was like, what are you doing with my stuff? Yeah, just don't use GHD, GHDs or anything like that, because that won't do your models any favour. <laughs> half of the guys are like, what? And half the other guys are like, oh, I know what they are. Okay, give a little lighter patch here. That's Nora done. Not as I keep calling a Dora. I don't quite know why. I don't need to do a lot on these. And we are going to keep these simple because like I said earlier on, this is these are really beginner kind of paint jobs. Just for people that have got the game and they're keen to get them painted up so they can start playing. But maybe they've never made a miniature before, they've never painted a miniature. And they don't really know what to do. So the whole thing of this has been quick quick way of painting up your mini so they don't look like bare plastic. Dee -dee -dee. My local Warhammer Games manager, Cam, he said, uh, we were talking about it, he was saying, yeah, when I've got my first load of dudes painted up, go in and they'll show me how to paint things. And I was like, he said, just bring them in when you've made them. I'm like, no, I cannot bring unpainted minis to this table. No, it's just against my rule. I can't, I can't be me and bring an unpainted mini, so it's not gonna happen. Right, so a quick blast of the hairdryer just to get that dried. A little bit. Okay, that's that bit. And next we have, that's his next. Let's have a quick look at the chat. Uh, I got a hairdryer for decals that was far too powerful and blew the decals off into infinity. Yeah, I tried doing decals with a hairdryer once, Tony. It makes them not dry properly, so they can crinkle up. Especially if you've used like decal setting solutions, it can really mess them up. So I, I don't use them for decals at all because it's, it's like a 50-50. Uh, risk scenario. 
I've been using empty medication bottles. My wife and I have prescriptions, so there are a ton of them in the house, says uh, says Miss Katonic. Yep, uh, Dr. Faust Painting Clinic uses those as well. Anything anything at all, even old Citadel pots, doesn't really matter. As long as you can use it to hold the thing, and then you've got the miniature on top. I mean, these aren't brilliant. I, can hold them, I can't really hold them like that, but I can hold them like this. And it just means that when you're painting, you can rest your hands like that, and you can paint more carefully. You're not having to hold the figure while you're painting it because that's the worst thing you can do. The thing about Citadel paints is they're beautiful paints, but they do tend to come off quite easily. They rub off quite easily. Uh, what's next? Next we have, next we have, uh, there are some wooden planks on some of these. There's a couple on the Mutants one. Uh, there's none on Puppy Dog, so you can go over there. And there's a couple of bits of wood on Nora's base. We're going to get these painted up. On Vicious Start, Viz. Yeah. We start that dark now. Let's start with Zandri Dust. We'll make him a kind of light colour. Oh, I haven't opened this one before. Blimey, Riley. Get the wet palette back. Right, where's my uh, paint dishing out brush? Liam Hines says, Stroop Cadet Liam reporting in, sir. Welcome. I hope you brought Stroop for everybody. Otherwise, there'll be some sad faces around. Uh... By the end of the stream, let me know how annoying that is. <laughs> I did have the camera originally set up on, like, taped to some bits on the desk. Because I didn't want it on the overhead lamp, because it gets in the way. Then I realised every time I cleaned the brush, it was like an earthquake. With the viewer, I'm like, yeah, maybe not. Okay, so I'm gonna go with some Zandri dust first of all. For these little bits of wood. So, it was painted now. You don't have to be super neat with these. You'll, as you watch me do this, you'll see I'm not being like delicate or careful. There's a good reason for that. We are gonna do some heavy sort of shades on here which will hide a lot of sins. So don't worry too much about getting them along the edges and things like that, or getting the edges nice and neat. Just get the paint on there. You've kind of, I've gone over the base a little bit there, but that's fine. Not the end of the world. Because you know, washes and shades, as I've said many times before, they hide a multitude of sins. I've got some paint on the base there, but I'm not fussed. Two bits for him. And also for Nora. We have. Uh, a bit there. One other handy tip I've started to learn, by the way, is that when it comes to painting tiny things, little details, not tiny things like, you know, like buckles on belts and things, but painting small things, don't always assume that a tiny brush is your best ally. Sometimes a bigger brush actually makes it easier to paint tiny things. Because as long as the brush has got a really nice fine tip, like this one, then it's more important that the brush be a bit bigger than you think. Because first and foremost, it avoids loads of little brush marks, because if you've got a tiny brush, you're having to go across the surface of whatever you're painting a lot. If you've got a bigger brush with a very fine tip, you can actually do things in one stroke and you're not actually having to really almost not touch the surface of the thing at all. The other reason is it holds more paint than a tiny brush. With a tiny brush, you're doing that, you have to reload, do that. With this one, you can just paint it like that and it's a lot faster. Two bits of wood on there. That's it for the wood. Pretty shaky hands today. Not because I'm live on telly, it's because I'm old. I'm also resting my elbow on the desk, which means it's got that, like the, when you 
rub the dog's belly and its leg go. You rest your elbow on the desk and your hand goes, yeah. Is there any wood on there? Oh yes, there's some wood on poppy dogs as well. Oh, I didn't see that. I hope this is on camera, by the way, folks. Apologies, I couldn't get the camera any closer. I did my best. Get it as close as I can. But any closer than that, and it's actually in my way, and I can't get anywhere near the model to paint it. But painting like this on camera is actually quite good for me, because it's forcing me to paint from a distance. From a distance. Paint from a reasonable distance, because my eyesight's terrible, and I have to get right close up. It's actually getting me used to not painting super close to the model, which is nice. There. Edge. Uh, the other thing about using a slightly bigger brush is if you you won't see it here, but when I'm painting this edge, I'm almost not touching the model at all. I'm touching the very tip of the brush to the model very, very gently, and the paint's kind of flowing out of the brush. That's what you want. You don't want to be having to jam a brush on there and get brush marks and use a tiny brush for tiny details. Makes you more likely to do that. That's why you see when you see people painting miniatures, they tend to use brushes that are that size or bigger. Because they hold more paint and they have a better point. You know, you can get super fine detailing brushes and they have lots of uses. But for things like painting these planks. Uh, now I could do a second coat, but I don't want to. Because I want it to look a little bit faded. Uh, no, no, no. Just have a quick swig of coffee. How is the weather for everybody today? What Report back with what your weather is doing. I'm British. I have to talk about the weather. It's in my contract. Uh, report back what your weather is doing. I'm going to give this a hairdryer. Where do I get the Fallout models from? Because as, as so as I heard, they were being released and had a total nerdgasm. I need them so badly to feed my addiction. I will tell you exactly where they are. Give me one second. And it'll make a camera go wobbly. I'm not going to type it in on my iPad where the chat is. Type it in on the actual chat. Go to... One moment, see we play. I'll put my hand here so you know I'm still streaming. I've not crashed. Go to. For some reason I can never smell but spell spell Medifius right. That's Medifius.com. In fact, I'll do it as a link for you. I still can't. Oh. Com. It might show up as a link in the chat, I'm not sure, or it totally won't, never mind. Anyway, go there. You can go to Modifius.net as well. Um, the game isn't out till May. Uh, till May? Yes, the game isn't out till May. Uh, and these are from the first wave of figures. There are more waves coming. But the first wave of figures comes out in May when the game is actually released. But they are taking pre-orders, so get in there now with your pre-orders. Uh, and what they've said is basically they're going to obviously fulfill all the pre-orders first as a priority and then deal with everybody else who's ordered after the live date. There's not just these, there's tons of stuff at the moment, the first wave. I'm not sure exactly what is in the first wave, uh, but there's going to be successive waves. And Medifius are going to send me more figures as the waves get released. But they've got things like a new Coca-Cola machine, uh, a full Corvega, either in pristine condition or wrecked. They've got desks and tables and computers. They've got mutants. They've got Wasteland Survivors. Uh, vault dwellers, they've got Minutemen if you really want to paint Preston Garvey. Have at that. Um who wants to lavish any care on Preston Garvey? He's like, oh shut up, Preston Garvey. Oh I actually installed a mod on mine that just makes him give you one quest at a time because Minutemen quests are like don't need another settlement to need my help. Oh Preston Garvey. Oh uh yeah they've got loads of stuff. Uh, animals and creatures, obviously death claws and power armor dudes and all kinds of things. The power armor looks sweet. I should stop knocking these over now. 
Right, so that's that bit. Uh, what else do we have on these bases? There is a little bit of metalwork on Nora, Nora. I nearly called the Dora again on her base. On the mutant, there's not much else. And on Puppy Dog, there is a couple of Nuka Cola caps and a Nuka Cola bottle. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to paint those yet. Um, but what I'm going to do is, I think. I'm going to put some metallic on those Nuka Cola caps. Now, for this, I will use my Windsor and Newton Series 7 double O. Smashing. And I'm going to use a little tiny touch of Vallejo Metal Color Duraluminium 77702. I'm just going to get a little bit of this. This is a beautiful paint. I love this paint. Yeah. A little bit of this. Any drop. Now, handy tip here, if you do like me and you just put a little tiny drop of this on a palette or something, just remember it's there and don't then put your hand in it, because that sucks. Far more than we actually need. This stuff is just like liquid metal, it just flows like mercury, it's incredible stuff. I'm going to, if I can, get some metallic on these bottle caps. The beauty of this and many other metallic paints is that for the most part they're very well behaved and what I mean by that is they flow into shapes and recesses but they also tend to just go exactly where you put them they don't tend to disappear off across the model you can literally touch the model just I mean I'm hardly touching the model at all here I'm, I'm probably touching like an atom of my brush to the model and the paint is just flowing off the brush onto the model. What I mean by well behaved. A couple of bottle tops there. Uh, there was some metal on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same on here. Now I wouldn't normally use such a bright shiny metal here. But I just want it to be stand out a little bit when I do all the weathering and shading. So we may as well do this here. Get this at the right angle. Just so that when I do do all the washes and things, the metallic may still stand out a little bit. Now these are really small. But given what I just said a minute ago about sometimes using a brush bigger than you need. Um, I could use the triple zero brush, which is even smaller. But it doesn't hold that much paint. Uh, and I could use my bigger, the bigger brush I was using a minute ago. But I know that this paint flows beautifully. It doesn't need to be worked hard to get off the brush onto the piece. So, knowing that, that this is a, just a wonderful paint that flows really well. I know I can just use this brush. Which is fine enough. That it will do the job. And it doesn't need to hold a lot of paint because the paint's not going to be a struggle to get off the brush. You kind of, when you work with various brands of paints, you'll kind of, over time, learn how different ones work. In that amount of paint, that bit of paint there, that's a million times more than I actually need for what I'm doing. That's that bit, and I don't think he has anything metallic to paint. No. Right, so that's that. Uh, Liam says, right, got to go. Bye, Mr. Fox. Thank you for the information. I hope you have a good day. You too, matey. Thank you for coming along. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. See what the chat's doing. Uh, I asked you about the weather, didn't I? Uh, let's have a look. Chris the Pyro says, hello. Hey, Chris. It's got Southern dull, overcast and foggy fox. Yeah, but you've got puffing, so it makes up for it. Miss Catonic says, it's snowing here in South Dakota. This is illegal. South Dakota's like desert and stuff. Why, why have you got snow and we've got nice temperate weather? Could it be because perhaps, you know, the climate's all screwed up? 85 degrees and I'm in New Mexico, US. Wow. I don't know what that is in European temperatures, but I guess it's warm. Uh, white night. 13 degrees, blue sky, sun out all day in Plymouth, Devon. 
Right, my babber. I know that's not a Devon accent, but it's the nearest I can get. Right, my babber. Weather is highly average here in York. No sun, wind, no rain, just meh. I thought, we could, well, I was about to say it's more Yorkshire than York, but there you go. Uh, Roberto Austria. Hi, Fox. Hi, Roberto. Uh, I'm looking at the robot set. Those look fun to paint up. Yeah, they are actually quite cool. The good thing is with Fallout 4, uh, if you're going to paint, say, the Robotrons or anything, the Protectrons or whatever. Robotrons, that's not the right word. If you're going to, say, paint the protect Protectrons, just next time you play the game, wait till there's a Protectron up on screen, on the loading screen, and do a screenshot. Because the weathering on the in-game models is fantastic, and it'd be really good to copy that. Uh, Fox, it's sunny here, but cold in New Jersey. New Jersey, says Doug Schramm. Uh, Scrifty Pup. Fox, the reason you keep calling a Dora is you secretly want to do the Dora Railgun. Yeah, like I secretly want to eat my own face as well. Don't want to do the Dora Railgun. Like, what do you need? I need 13 gallons of glue and 400 gallons of grey, please, and that'll be it. Nora the Explorer. I agree, Fox. The Dural Aluminium is my favourite paint. I use it any chance I get. Yeah, it is, Phil. It should be it's just like you literally almost aren't touching the brush. It's almost like the brush and the plastic bit of the model are like a molecule apart, and the paint just goes onto the model. You don't... Very delicate. Uh, Scott Sutherland says, I'm hoping Mike Mountain brings some nice sunshine when he comes to visit in a few weeks. Oh, he's coming to see you, isn't he? Hopefully he will. Hey, you never know. He might bring you some nice brushes as well. Uh, Mike Mountain actually gave me, a couple of years ago, this Wargamer Regiment brush, which I've only just started recently using. I, I, I think I had it in my pile and I forgot it was there because it was in a million other brushes. And I've started using this and I can love this brush. This is just the best brush I've ever used. So that's why I bought the Mega Brush set. So thank you, Mike Mountain. Uh, Alan Simmons in Alberta, Canada. We are sunny at minus five degrees. Alberta, Canada, eh? Welcome from Canada. Uh, in fact, let me just hang on, hang on. Give me a moment. I know I put a picture of this up the other day. Oh, I've run over my own cable. Hang on. Oh. I put a picture up the other day. There's my uh, Elite Dangerous. Cobra Mark III. <laughs> oh, Canada. Yeah. I love Canada. I love, I've never been. Don't know much about it, but I love Canada just because it's Canada. Uh, yeah, he, uh, Chris from Gross Models prints uh, la, 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 words. He 3D printed an Elite, oh, an Elite, a Cobra from Elite Dangerous because I've got a Cobra III. And uh, so I painted it up. I had, to stick, I had to make the little vents on the back out of plastic card because they broke off. And I made these little engines out of plastic card. And I added the spoiler there and the little fins and the front spoiler. Sweet or what? There's my Canadian. Because that's that's the livery it has in game. I went to the livery store and decided to spend some real money. And it was like, oh wait, you mean I can do my ship out in the Canadian flag? <laughs> okay, done. <laughs> South Dakota is up in the north part of the US. We're not that far down from Canada. Oh yeah, sorry. I don't know why, but Dakota sounds like... I don't know. But I think of like, you know... Iowa and Dakota and places like that and Oregon so it always sounds like they're down south somewhere <laughs> I don't have that accent but thanks Fox that's alright my babber I've decided you speak like this now that's what you speak like you say right Is it, oh, see what I mean about the paint I forgot it was on there yeah always be careful when you're doing this metallic paint put it on something that you're not likely to pick up or touch I've lost count of the number of times see I knew I'd do that lost count of the number of times I've had a little bit of paint on like that little wooden placemat been painting something and without realizing placed a model down or dropped a model and it's gone into the paint and i've covered a model in paint it's like oh yeah i have done that many many times so there you go uh right what is next i'll give that a quick hair drying there's not actually a lot of detail to paint on these there's nothing on that one Uh, the only other thing is the Nuka Cola bottle, but I'm going to leave that till last because that needs to be clean and shiny. I don't quite know how I'm going to paint that. Uh, so next is wash time. Let's get it washed. So we're going to use a couple of washes. We're going to use a uh, norm oil for shadow to get some shadow effects because of course we're going to use norm oil. Uh, and then we're going to use some Agrax earth shadings for general dust and dirt effects. There's going to be more weathering we're going to do on this. Uh, so, I shall first and foremost get myself a brush of the shading. Uh, this one will do. doesn't need to be a nice brush, just a brush that can carry the shade. 
Uh, Dalgenize, I hope I pronounced that right, says, Oh, nice, I'm in South Dakota as well. Uh, Rubber to Austria, is that workstation new? Did you do, did you do it or buy it? This workstation is actually a Citadel workstation. It does say it on there somewhere. I've got Citadel. Um, that they released a few years ago and then stopped doing after about a year. They made, they just released, it's just plastic. And I went online and thought, oh, I could fancy one of them, but they don't make them anymore. They only had them out for a little while. And I went online and there's some guy on Amazon, on eBay, selling one of these that cost you about a tenner. It's just a single piece of plastic for like 300 quid. And I'm like, what? Get out of here. For like 300 quid for a bit of plastic. So I was like, yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, so I went into my local Warhammer shop and I was talking to, to at the time, uh, manager Chris. And I said, oh, yeah, I saw this thing. He was selling one of those old like workstation things for like 300 quid. And he's like, Psh, ridiculous. I said, I know. And he said, hang on a minute. He went in the back room, came, I've got one edge on it. And there you go. It was like covered in paint because they used to use it in the shop for like demonstrations. So I had paint and stuff all over it. Yeah, okay. So he gave me this. I got this for free. It's an old Citadel workstation. Um, I decided to paint it light grey so it worked better with the lighting and the camera. The thing is, I forgot to prime it. I just painted it with some Tamiya light grey. So it's all chipping off and I'm kind of knackered now because I can't prime over the paint because that would be pointless. So, yeah, it needs to clean. It just meant, it can I don't know, I, kinda, I can use this outside if I, in, during the summer when I can go out in the garden and sit at the table and paint things, which is my plan. I didn't do it last year even though I planned to. Um, I can use this outside. I wanted a little sort of portable workstation. So, let's do some null oil. So, first of all, first of all any shade you ever use for a... Uh, blah, blah. So I'll just start that whole thing again because that sentence was really fast. Anytime you use a shade from Games Workshop, if it's a matte shade, not normal oil gloss or Agrax gloss, 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 shake the living crap out of it. Totally scale models. Hey, Fox. Hey, totally. Yeah. Scale models. Because if you don't shake them, the matting agent doesn't get mixed in and um, it comes out gloss. I actually was quite amused that I was in the Warhammer store once. And the guy was saying, I painted this miniature and he came out shiny when Agrax Earth shaded him. And the member of staff there was like, oh, don't know where that is. Oh, don't, can't, can't imagine what that is. And I was like, dude, if you don't shake it, the matting agent doesn't get mixed in because they're just inks with matting agent in. He went, oh, what well, is? I said, yeah, he said, all oh, right, okay. There you go then. And the gloss shades, like Agrax Earth shade gloss and normal gloss, are just the same shades with the, with the matting agent removed or not included. So now you know. We shake the living crap out of them. So we're just going to get the shade on here. I'm going to be careful. Not taking our time. We're just slapping it on. Slap it on. Just to give some shadow and depth. Now it is a bit extreme. But that's fine. It's only extreme because we it's what we saw the grey light before we put the shade on. Because that's how you're remembering it. Remember, this is earth and dirt and stuff, so. All jolly good stuff. That's that shade on there. Make sure it's worked into all the recesses. At this point, it doesn't matter if it pulls up because it's supposed to be just like earth, dirt, so the more random it is, the better. It looks worked in, says Chris Smith. What does? I've lost track of whatever I was talking about, I will be honest. Mm. Careful around puppy dog. Now, I remember here I said I had paint, like you could see some of the the primer coat underneath where I painted the grey around his paws. This is where the shade will actually collect around the paws. Hide that a little bit. Not a, it's not a big end of the world job. Doesn't matter. Lily. So this normal oil wash, this this coat is just to give some shadowing. So you've got some some relief to the stuff on your little base. Makes things look like they have some depth and weight to them basically. Puppy dog done. 
Und nach für dem Supermutant, ja. Again, you may think it looks a little weird because you've got this black shade on a grey undercoat, but again, you kind of have to forget what the colour it is before you put the shade on. Because keep in mind, it's the colour is really going to be down to the shades. The grey is just to be a highlight and sort of texture. I don't know what I'm saying. I'll just stop that sentence now. I don't know where I'm going with that. You know when your brain has an idea and then you can't quite figure out how to get the words to express it? Like my every working, every walking, working, waking minute. Or when your brain just can't even get a sentence out because it can't figure out how to speak. That's another thing. Anybody new joining us who's joined us in the last sort of hour or so, thank you very much for coming along. Uh, I am showing you quick and simple ways to get these bases painted. As with the rest of these streams, uh, the rest of the videos for this particular build, uh, these are aimed at the beginners who've got their pieces and their game set. They're not really, they've never painted a miniature before, they just want to get the, the, the things painted up so they can feel them in a game and not have um, just unpainted miniatures. Leave this to dry for a minute. Um, and it's just a way to, to get them painted. So I'm showing, I'm showing simple ways to paint them up. So it's not like master class in how to make a museum quality painted miniature. It's just how to get some paint on your miniatures so they look okay. And we're going to do that. Leave that to dry for a minute. I shall have some swigs of my coffee. And uh, I shall leave them to dry for a moment. I'll see what the chat is doing. To be doing in chat. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, do, do, do. Miskatonic. Yeah, most people in the US don't know where the state is. No worries that you're not familiar. It's 28 degrees Fahrenheit, 2 degrees centigrade. Yeah, that's quite cold. Yeah, that's quite. I don't know why, but I mean, you know, I, I kind of know my way around the states in, the, in my mind. But there are some states that you think are in different places. It's weird how you kind of misremember where things are. It just sounds like somewhere that's further down south because they grow corn a lot or something, or it's always sunny. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Dargenese, I'm in Sioux Falls. Where are you at? Says Dan from Miskatonic. Doo -doo -doo. Totally scale models. You know me. It's Steve. I do. I do apologize. The thing is that when you get to know people by both their name and their YouTube tags, you kind of sometimes you you know who they are instinctively, and sometimes you kind of forget who people are. You don't forget them, but you kind of lose the association between um, the handle and the name. Plus the fact I know about a million people who have 13 different names across different platforms, it gets very good. Fox, do you plan on pay playing or just displaying these? It might be fun to do a diorama, says Doug uh, Schramm. Um, no, I've never played a tabletop game in my life. I have become interested in Warhammer since I started painting their miniatures. Uh, and once I've got a little cadre of troops painted up and ready to go, for my unending forces of the holy contrivance, my army that I'm building up, I'm going to take them along to my local Warhammer store, and the guy, the manager there, Cam, is going to uh, give me a sort of a quick, a quick and dirty game to teach me the basics. Um, but in terms of these, no, I probably never played the game. Um, I'll. The chaps at Medifius contacted me and asked me if I wanted to, you know, I asked, sorry, I'll correct that. I actually contacted them and said, "Would you like me to do some films?" So they sent me these because I've been looking at these for a while. Um, so I probably wouldn't actually uh, play this game. I mean, I'll be honest, these are just beautiful little sculpts that they're kind of, to me, they're more like you want to paint them as standalone display pieces because they look much nicer than, than your bog standard, you know, 100 dudes in an army for Warhammer. So, um, yeah, I probably wouldn't play this tabletop game. I think, it, it, if I remember rightly, it's kind of designed more of a sort of slightly larger than normal skirmish game anyway. Uh, but I, I'm never saying never, you know, I might do at some point, but I've not even played Warhammer yet. Don't have the free time either, that's the other thing, of course. Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, by the way, why I'm not hair drying these, um, although you can hair dry all the Citadel paints and any water based acrylic paint, I have found that if you try and hair dry a shade, like a Citadel shade, it can affect the way they dry. It can make them dry with tide marks or patches that you don't want, or it can make them kind of go a bit 
how to explain they don't kind of settle down as much what i found is you can hair dry them but you need to leave them for five minutes or so ten minutes first just to settle down then you can blast them with the hair dryer if you put them on and then hair dry them they they kind of tend to dry a bit differently sometimes they don't flatten out they look a bit gloopy and you get puddles and things it's just cool i'm just leaving these for a moment the downside of doing this on the live stream you see coffee times yes ah. Sean Kilgore, hi Sean, says, wait, that's not a Gundam, lol. Damn, my ruse is, is rumbled. So I've got a mouthful of coffee, I've got a moustache full of coffee now, hang on. Yeah, I swigged and I should have, shouldn't have swigged. Uh, chat's doing fine, miserable here in Jersey, wet rain. Oh, it's the worst kind of rain, wet rain. Dry rain's much better, says Chris Smith. Uh, Ghost Lyle sends a picture, why are we doing pineapples? What's pineapple all about? Tim L. Hi, Tim. Hi, Fox. Warm greetings from Singapore on a late Sunday night. Hi, Tim. Yes, you're getting some warm weather then. The rest of us are suffering. Fox of the day, I thought I saw a Lego of a Star Wars on your desk. I saw, well, or am I ready? It really hallucinating. Um, uh, Lego of a Star Wars. I do have some Lego Star Wars stuff. I don't know if you saw that, which was my Elite Dangerous um, Cobra. That was on there. Oh, hello. Uh, I do have some Lego Star Wars. I have a, a Y wing and a, that I actually glued together and painted up. I do have an A wing, Lego A wing that I glued together and painted up, but that's um, unfortunately not in my possession anymore, through nefarious purposes and means. Uh, Lego Star Wars on my desk. I think now there was also uh, I have got the um, not Lego. Mega blocks, <sighs> mega blocks. Yeah, oh. it's the De the Arcadia jump ship from Destiny. I've got that. Uh, I do need to get that glued together and painted up at some point, but I've got to figure out how to get all the nubs off and make it look nice and sweet. Uh, Even Monkey nineteen seventy nine says I stopped watching Stargate to watch you and you're watching paint dry. Oh, Stargate man, oh. which one? SG one or Atlantis or Universe? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I need to talk about Stargate now. Stargate's brilliant. I've actually I'm been binge watching through SG One again. Man, I love SG One. It is my favourite sci-fi series of all time. Absolute favourite. Brilliant. I love little ad libs and things they add in that you when you read about how they were on set with each other. The bit where Teal has to say something like, um, did Doctor did Doctor Jackson's encephalogram show any abnormalities or um, something like that? Some really complicated sentence and there's a pause and then O'Neill just kind of goes, "I dare you to say that again." But my favourite line is where they've got the new the new big uh, X three hundred three, and O'Neill's like, "Well, they didn't go for my proposal," and Carter's like, "What? You mean they won't allow this mission?" He went, oh no, they'll allow the mission. That's fine, but they wouldn't they wouldn't accept my name for the ship. And Carter's like, "Sir." We cannot call this ship the Enterprise. And he's like, oh, why not? I love Stargate so much. Uh, I've just binge watched SG-1 on season nine at the moment, says Evil Monkey. I'm on season seven. I'm just coming up to like the last third of season seven. SG-1, so much. And the best bit is, as you get towards the end of season 10, you know, you know there's like Atlantis to come back and binge watch that afterwards. Steve at Totally Scale says, I love Stargate. Shame they dropped it. Well, they've done that. They've kind of re... They've kind of re creating it again aren't they They're, it's sort of you've got stargate origins which came out online which you have to go through stargate command and subscribe to them to watch it or you can just find somewhere that will, you can stream it from like i did i'm not going to say anything more on that um and it was it was all right it it cost them like about 35 pence it's got no budget to it so it's like four sets and terrible acting but it's all right i think it was just like a, a teaser to get people talking about stargate again I think, from what I've read, the people at MGM um, have all said that MGM actually likes the franchise. They do love their own franchise. Uh, and they know how important it is. And they know people want more. They've just got to be comfortable making it because it's... SG-1 SG one, and all the Stargate stuff finished because MGM went bankrupt. Uh, and they cancelled everything. And then Universe wasn't that popular. I don't know why, it's brilliant. 
Um, and they just kind of MGM was in the middle of bankruptcy at the time and it all fell over. So they're being really cautious about how they bring it back. So I think Origins is a good start to say, hey, we've still got Stargate. And they've got Stargate Command on the whole website, which is... So yes, another another long form, 23 episodes a year, long form series, please, would be nice. Right, I'm going to give these a blast with the hairdryer now because they've been dry for a little bit. Apologies if that's really loud, by the way. I don't know how loud it is. Uh, what was the one where they were on a ship? That's all of them. Um, on a ship. Uh, uh, they're on ships, on many of them. Uh, seen any SG Origins? The production isn't bad, but the plot makes no sense. Yeah, it, it, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's dead low budget. It does kind of make some sense a little bit. Like, why nobody remembers... The, why she doesn't remember the fact she's been through the Stargate before. Because the woman with the stupid mask that was a terrible that was a terrible character that woman that outfit was a ridiculous um tells her to forget everything after seeing the teltac i bought one from the same seller and a puddle jumper and a death glider yeah good girl uh, it's in a box at me. i can't get it out now but um i've been waiting for someone to make a teltac for years like i made one it's really sweet i'm looking to do it that's my favorite ship in the whole stargate the teltac it's like a little snail Right, next in we're going with some Agrax Earthshade. Again, shake the crap out of it, otherwise it'll come out shiny. Um, universe, says Evil Monkey. Yeah, Stargate Universe. I actually liked it. Have you seen the Hasegawa kits of the anime Last Exile, says Tim L. They have nice steampunk style vehicles. I don't even know what that is, but I'll go and check it out later. Brian Costello. Hi, Brian, says Island. Steely grey sky warm, though. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds lovely. Uh, pissing it down here in the Midlands, says uh, Steve. Yep. Not this side of the Midlands, says Evil Monkey. <laughs> ah, we're going to get a turf war now between Steve and Evil Monkey. Right, we're going to do some Agrax Earthshade. We've got the shadow layer in with the normal. That's just to give some depth in your panel lines and some bring up the details. Next, we need to start getting some earthy tones. So we're going to use the Agrax Earthshade for that. I'm going to do exactly the same as we just did. Which is, quite simply, to put this on a little mat because I'm going to knock it over if I don't. Me. Right. We'll do this. It's going to be exactly the same as we've just done, basically. This will give it a brown tone. And it doesn't matter if there are still some little bits that are still a little bit wet from the norm oil. I mean, you could do wet blending with this if you wanted to, to get a real kind of random patchiness. You could actually put on your norm oil and then do your Agrax Earthshade straight away, and it will blend them all together. You could do that if you wanted to. Again, yeah, notice I'm not, I'm not being careful, I'm not thinking about it, I'm just putting it on. <clears throat> it darkens the black areas even more. Better relief. But it also kind of darkens the general tone and browns it up so that it does stand out a bit more. It's not just light grey with dark black shading. It's light grey. It's like a earthy tone colour now, so it just helps bring things together a little bit. And again, as I said before, it will collect around the feet of the people, the figures, and help hide any bits where the, you can still see, say, primer or undercoat or anything like that. It just hides any, any bits where you've painted like the edge of a plank and it's a bit of a ropey paint job, it's a bit rough around the edges. It just hides all that. Shades cover all sins. All sins are forgiven. Shades. There we go. See in there make sure you go around the edges as well good now for Nora flipping Nora I didn't actually play through as Nora I played through as Nate probably should play through as Nora I 
But like everybody else, I'm sitting here waiting expectantly for news of Bethesda's next big game, which I suspect will be an Elder Scrolls game. I think it'll be a while before we hear from another Fallout game. I, mean, I can't wait for Fallout 5, don't get me wrong. Okay, so I've got a bit of shade on a feet there, but only to do with that. Oh, I made the terrible mistake of licking the brush and it's got a great third shade on it. <laughs> horrible flavour. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, coffee. Quick. Coffee. Oh. Oh. Oh, don't ever lick the brush when it's got Agrax Earth shade on it. Ah. Oh. oh, worst flavour in the world. Nice and sunny in Florida here, says Sean Kilgore. Hi, Sean. Doug Schramm says, were you a fan of the Stargate movie? Absolutely. Absolutely. Although, obviously when it first came out, it was like a brilliant movie because it had Anubis in it. And uh, for those that you don't know, probably most of you, before I did all this model making stuff on the YouTubes, for many years, I did a webcomic. Uh, and since being a small child, my passion was drawing, doing comics and cartoons and stuff. But I learned at an early age that I can't draw people very well at all. But what I also learned uh, was that I could do sort of cartoon animal faces. So I did anthropomorphic art for many years. And the reason I discovered I could do that is because I had a book on Egypt. It was a golden book on Egypt and there was a picture of an Anubis statue and a picture of Anubis. And I copied that and that's how I suddenly figured out I can do animal heads. So I've got a tattoo of Anubis on my arm as a kind of... You know, nod of the hat to the fact that it was that picture of Anubis that inspired me to do animal characters that I did then for 25, 30 years. So, yes, I have a lot of love for Anubis. Uh, so I love the movie because it had Anubis dudes in it. Some of Ra's guards had Anubis heads. But then once you've watched, like, SG-1, I kind of prefer the, the, the feeling of SG-1, the silliness and the, the, the humour and the, the ensemble cast. I do hope if they re if they do do a new series at some point... To start with, at least, they do more SG-1 style than Stargate Universe style. Because don't get me wrong, I do like Universe, and I love um, things like The Expanse now. Current sci-fi is brilliant, but I think, although a, a gritty, dark sci-fi series in the, in the Stargate Universe would be great, I think they need to really start with something more light-hearted and fun, like SG-1. Because it's the characters you grew to love. It was a brilliant ensemble cast. Uh, and that's the equivalent of a self-stabbing, says Miskatonic. Yes, it is, says Dan. Yes. Don't. Oh. What did I say an hour ago? Don't, don't lick a brush because I got exerciate test robot. Then what did I do? I lick the brush. Yeah, we'll count that as a stabbing. There you go. You got your stabbity. Where did I put that normal oil? I've no idea. don't know where I put my normal oil. Though. It's disappeared. Okay. I think there's a vortex on my desk that swallows the thing I need. Fallout New Orleans, says Ghost Liar. Yeah, that is the rumour. Although I have to say, I have to say, it fills me with a little bit of dread because the one bit I didn't like in Fallout 4 was when you go to the swampy areas because it's really boring. I like the inner city areas because they're fantastic. All the buildings and things you can go in and places you can explore. When it comes to just swamp land, it's not that exciting. And I know New Orleans is not all swamp land, but, but yeah, that would be kind of cool. I'm going to leave this to dry for a moment, to air dry for a moment or two. Uh, Miskatonic Dan says, uh, the door stories get old fast for me. Yeah. What, in universe? The, the, yeah, the, or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, dark and gritty's good, but you've got to have some really fantastic catches and hooks in the story to make people want to keep watching it. Uh, and that's why the dark and gritty ones tend to have an arching story that goes throughout the whole season. The thing I like about SG-1 is it's funny. Sometimes it's serious, light-hearted, but it's often they've got the overarching story for the whole series, but there's always a Monster of the Week story. It's always like that kind of thing. And I hope they keep that. I hope they don't go for the 24 episodes with one single storyline going all the way through and nothing else. And it would also be nice if they did a kind of, like, SG-1 20 years later, so it's like it's a new group of people, that they can still then get the original actors in there as little cameos. That would be nice. That would be nice. But yes, we do all want we do want some closure on universe. I know there's a comic book that gives a closure to the storyline, but I've not read that. Uh, totally scale model uh, says uh, last Jedi out tomorrow. I've seen it. I couldn't watch the Battlestar reboot. No likable characters. I didn't want any of them to reach Earth. I actually quite liked it. I quite like them. 
That wasn't so bad. Right, give this a moment to do some more drying. It's a boring bit, this one. You have to wait for paint to dry. <laughs> you realise you are sitting literally here, sitting watching telly, watching paint dry. Sorry about that. That is the truth. You are actually watching paint dry. I quite like to, I quite like the expanse. I'm quite enjoying the expanse. It's quite good. Although it's one of those series that's really engaging when you watch it. If you if you like get it where you you can watch the whole season at once. Quite an engaging storyline. But once I'd finished watching it, and like a week later, I'm like, I have no idea what happened. I can't remember anything about it. Whereas with SG One, I'm going through it again now, and it's been about six years since I watched it last. And it's like, oh, this is the one where this happens, and this is the one where this happens. Oh, I don't want to watch this one. This is the one where this happens. It's really crap. So, weird. It's like, you know, I watched all of DS9, and then about four years later, watched it all again, and I kind of forgot most of the things that happened in each episode. I knew the whole storyline. So I could watch every episode and have a great time. SG1, for some reason, they stick. So as soon as I like, get two minutes into an episode, I'm like, yeah, this is the one where such and such happens. Have you got around to trying scale 75 paints yet, Fox, says Evil Monkey? Um, no, I, I have a billion paints and limited funds, so uh, I don't have any need to buy new paints just yet. Uh, I did have to get some Vallejo paints to do the uh, Imperial Skitter. Three models. Because I'm doing that with the Vallejo paints because they don't sell Citadel paints. So I got some Vallejo paints, but... I, didn't pay for those, that's for me models. They very kindly supplied the paints for the build. So I've got those. I've got the my Citadel paints that I got a load of anyway to paint Warhammer stuff. And I've got a load of ammo paints and I've got a whole shed load of Tamir paints. So I don't tend to lo really get new paints unless I specifically need them. Like I said, the Vallejo ones are for this build. E model sent me those. The ammo paints I've got were for my Zaku build, which I will get around to finishing. But they are because I was filming those for Ammo by Meg. Um, other than that, yeah, I've not really needed to, uh, to buy any. So I will at some point. It's just I've, I've got nowhere to put new paints. I have no pressing need to get new paints right now. So, But I like the fact that they, they come out very, very matte. The one thing I'm not enjoying about the Vallejo game colours is they come out a bit shiny. I like the paints. I don't like the fact they come out shiny. So we'll see. Uh, do -do -do. I could not get into DS9, says Totally Scale Models. Then you're just wrong. Go back and watch it again, then sit on the step and think about what you've done. Just, just go, on. go on. Yeah, season one, like any Star Trek, season one is not the best season. You have to stick with it for season two. Season two, it gets better, and then it gets better and better and better and better. One of the best ensemble casts. My moustache keeps growing in my mouth, and I hate it. Uh, DS9 has one of the best ensemble casts. Bar none. But if you, if you still can't get it, then you just have to just... I want to sit on the step and think about what you've done. Uh, Tony Blywell, I like going films in the morning or early afternoon. The Last Jedi was almost empty on the day after it came out. It was only £4 to watch it. When I went to watch Rogue One, because I, I didn't have a day job, still don't have a day job technically, but it meant I, when it came out, I could go to the cinema at 1pm on a Monday morning, on a Monday afternoon, when everybody else is at work. So I got in there, and it was only like the second day of release or something. Got in there, and there's literally three other people in there. Fantastic. And there was nobody else in the cinema. It's like, you know what? Going to the cinema in the middle of the day on a work day is fantastic. Uh, scale 75 are freaking awesome for figures, but fragile for scale models, though, says Aviad Marder. Uh, Madar, sorry. I'm burping them. Yes, Citadel, I mean, Citadel aren't exactly hardcore. Most The thing with acrylic paints is, generally, acrylic paints are not very durable. You paint this miniature, if you paint a miniature with Citadel paints and you start handling it, the paint will come off. I mean, especially if you've airbrushed it and it's an even thicker, even thinner coat, the paint will come off. Um, and that's kind of the same for any acrylic paints. Tamiya paints are really hard to wear, but they're not really acrylics. They're more like lacquer acrylics. They're like alcohol based, they're not water based. So they are quite tough. But ammo are the same. You handle that model for a little bit and the, you'd paint stuff up and you're painting it, it just comes off. Uh, did you happen to catch Blade Runner 2049? No, I've not seen it. I must admit, I'm not feeling the urge to go and see it. I will watch it at some point, but... Uh, I'm sure I'll enjoy it when, it when I do see it. But, you know, it's like, sometimes it'll be like, a film comes out, I'm like, I want to go and see that. I want to see it now. I need to see it now. But even with things like The Last Jedi, I'm like, yeah, I'll see it at some point. 
I don't know. I'm kind of just I'm getting old now. I introduced my missus to Star Trek and DS9 was her favourite of all the series and certain episodes of TNG. Then she is clearly a keeper, Tony. TNG, uh, DS9 is by far the best series. I was saying to uh, the manager in my Warhammer store, it's funny how, like, I can go back and watch DS9 at any time because it's timeless. It, it doesn't date. I can't go back and watch The Next Generation because it looks so dated already and it's like, eh. Whereas DS9, it's all. TSM look for a list of DS9 episodes featuring the Dominion War. That was fantastic, says Miss Catonic. Just do anything from series two onwards, season two onwards. Glued to the sprue says, Space! Hello, Paul. And then he also says, I did not forget you were live streaming Honest. Yes, you did. Don't worry about it. Because you've remembered, Chris hasn't. <laughs> I'm sure he'll say this family stuff is working or something dumb like that. Right, let's give these a blast with the old hair dryers. I'm kind of whistling to fill in the space, but I can't whistle anything known because I'll get pulled for copyright. My God, Oh Canada is the best national anthem ever. Shades take a long time to dry with a hairdryer, and I don't want to sit here and listen to 10 minutes of hairdryer, so we'll give them another few minutes. I need to do dry brushing next, and that's why I need to get them dry. Mike Hornsey, now I have to stand up. Uh, where are we up to? Pineapple, what is this thing with pineapple? Uh, the first series of TNG is horrible, says Tony Blackwell. Yes, it is kind of ass. Uh, Star Trek always has a terrible first season. Roberto Austria, Fox, what coffee are you drinking? Big coffee, that's not coffee. It's a uh, Darag, but gold, I think. Um, this is my litre Batman cup, which means it requires two spoonfuls of coffee and four sugars and twice as much milk. It's just two big cups of coffee together, basically, which is why you've got two coffees and four sugars. Just uh, Darag, but gold, I think it is. Oh. And yes, I put my coffee cup on my work mat. Yes. Hang on, moustache moppage. Blame Canada, says glue to the sprue. Paul, I blame Canada for nothing. I loved how Fox decided that O Canada is the Xeon Anthem too. I just put it anywhere now. The joke was I was going to do it that every time I mentioned any country at all, I'm just going to use the O Canada Anthem because it's just the best national anthem. And then I put it in the video where I was mentioning Xeon. I thought, oh, I'll put the... And then, like, Jeff was like, really? O Canada? I'm like, yeah, I kind of didn't mean to make any associations with that. It's just my ongoing joke. It works. Uh, Dan at Miskatonic says time for me to get ready for work later folks thank you very much for watching Dan go and enjoy your day at work sorry to hear you have to go to work on a Sunday uh, but thanks for coming in <sighs> Mike Hornsey who says now I have to stand up that could be for one of two reasons it could be the National Anthem or it could be something else but I don't think I did anything that would be particularly invigorating <sighs> Paul, Paul. There you go. There's my spare. When you're doing your spare car, Paul. Uh, Chris that sent me the Cobra also printed his Cobra off and did one for Paul as well because Paul's got a ship I can't remember. But Paul hasn't painted his yet because he's rubbish. Paul. 
Glue to the sprue. Paul says, Mate, I have a drinks glass on my mat too. It's already filthy, so don't mind putting a drink in it. Oh, yeah. Right, oh, yeah. Right, that's that bit done. So, what I want to do now uh, is a bit more dry brushing. Now, if you're wondering why we did the dry brushing before we did all the washes, it's just so we can get some kind of three dimensionality to it. The shades then darken it down and give it some colour and texture. Uh, and it just makes things a bit more interesting. So, we're going to go over again with the dry brush just to kind of bring back a few more highlights. So we're going to start with Dawnstone. Dawnstone, which is actually a dry paint, which means it's rock hard and solid lumpy. Lumpy bumpy. We get ourselves our dry brush. Paul says, Spes car. Spes. Uh, so I need to move my wet palette out of the way because I'm not actually using it. Need more tissue. Uh, the reason I'm using Dawnstone is it's more of a darker bluey grey colour, which is closer to the colour we've now got. These dry paints is exactly the same. It's like jelly in there, it's weird. Get a little bit on the end of your brush. Work it in amongst the bristles. Sorry, Duncan. And just get on the base with it. Get on the base. <laughs> Uh, but we're going to be a bit more delicate with this than we were last time. We're just going to really try and pick out edges and things now. Last time we were trying to really make some lighter areas and kind of vary it up a little bit. This one we really are going to try and just focus on edges. A little bit. A bit lighter. Avoid the wooden things. Now the beauty of these dry paints is, although you can dry brush with any paint, as you saw me do earlier with the Administratum Grey, the dry paints are such that they are, they've got a lot more pigment in them and the pigment seems to be a bit finer. So if you want to make a light patch, you can do the old circular motions, build it up that way in a lot more finer, less grainy detail than you would if you used a normal paint just out of the pot. I don't know why, it just, they just, I think it's because they're just a finer pigment perhaps. And a little bit of working in. Just to make some light patches. Patches? We don't need those stinking patches, senor. Some variation. That's now there. Oh, I've got a Canada in my head now. I'm in the process of learning the lyrics. In English and in French. I just take a bit while to remember lyrics. I learn them straight away, but then I always forget them. Weird thing is, and I hate to say this to any Canadians out there, but it kind of sounds better in English than it does in French. <laughs> Why? It's... In, in French, the lyrics just don't seem to work very well. I don't know why. I mean, it's, I know I've just annoyed every single Canadian out there, now, but it does work better in English. Well, so I think you need to have a, a national campaign to actually change your country name to Canadia. Because it's funnier. I remember I was in a bar many years ago in a bar with some friends and uh, we got talking to a couple of girls and they were from Canada and my friend said where are you from and what's that accent and I'd already figured it out where are you from and she went oh we're from Can from Canada and I went Canadia eh and they thought that was the funniest thing ever that I called it Canadia so I clearly uh, impressed them very much I didn't get a snog out of it or anything, nothing. Oh, oh, I didn't even get a beer out of it. But I thought it was hilarious. Canadia. So yeah, you should change your name to Canadia because of all the reasons. I, not that you could really make Canada more awesome than it already is, but it would. More paint. What do you think is in reality? I actually know very little about Canada. Uh, I've never been there. I just... You know, it just... Strikes me as one of those things is like, yeah, that's a cool place. I need to go there at some point. But, like, you know, you get countries and they're either like good actors or bad actors on the world stage. Good guys and bad guys and places you want to go and places you have no desire to ever go. But kind of just like, in my mind, kind of just like everybody's, everybody's, most favourite neighbour who comes around with beers on a summer day on a sunny day and hangs out and you, you always get on with them. See nothing wrong with Canada. 
Yeah, clearly I know nothing about Canada. <sighs> well, that's that dry coat done. <laughs> Runny nose. So that's that dry brush layer done. That's just to bring out, bring out the little details again and make it a little bit lighter. Yeah, Canadian, eh? See what the chat's doing. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I've got an espresso maker and love coffee as strong as possible. Ah. I can't be bothered with that. I just need to get the coffee in the cup and in my throat as quickly as possible. So, yeah. Uh, Paul says, Matt, uh, no, he said that before. Uh, Paul says, I might just pretend I sanded the underside already and just paint the top of it. Yeah, I knew a girl like that one. Uh, totally scale model says biscuit base. What? What? Biscuit base. Where 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 did biscuit base come from? Explain this to me. I I actually forget what I talk about five minutes after I talk about it. So no idea where that's come from. Uh, Paul says you might prime it after the stream. Working on the scratch built filthy back door at the moment. Yeah, that looks awesome, Paul. You should get it in the boom hut. Post it in the boom hut if you haven't already. Dave, wise rum guy. Hey, Dave. Says sorry, Fox was not looking at the time. Don't mind. Don't worry, Dave. Don't worry. I'll let you off. Uh, Ghost Lyle says, Flower of Scotland is a better national anthem. Well, I'm half Scottish and half Irish, and I still think, oh, Canada's a better national anthem. You should have showed off your models and you would have got more than a snog. Haha, <laughs> yeah, it was 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, I don't tend to take my models into pubs. Need to chop one of the legs off my at says says uh, Totally Scale Models. Sounds a bit harsh. What you need to do is get a piece of like semi opaque plastic and glue it around the head in like a cone of shame like a dog would have and then just call it battle damage. <laughs> have a bunch of Canadian friends. I always call it Canuckistan, <laughs> says Doug Shroud. Right. Oh, we'll just that's that dry brush on. Oops. We need to do the same again now. We want to do something on the oh, I'm shaking. It. It's a dry paint. We're going to do the same again on the actual wood planks. Now, I'm not going to use the same dry brush because that dry brush is now wet because I've just cleaned it. And one thing you can't do a dry brush with is a wet brush. Oops. So get a little bit of this dry earth bark, uh, silver earth bark, I should say. Silver earth bark. And a bit on the brush. Work it in amongst the bristles. There you go. We need a tiny bit for this. And this is just to bring a little bit of definition to the pieces of wood. A little bit just picks out the edges just a tiny amount the darker shades from earlier bring out all the bits of all the sort of wood grain that's in there and this stuff just some more on the brush there's not much on there looks like caramel doesn't smell like caramel collect on the edges and also collect on the very tops of the ridges of the wood grain patterned areas all of those in a bit. There we have it, a bit more better looking wood now. And it's got some dark bits down there where the normal oil caught, and that just makes it look like a child of burnt. That's that. A lot of dry. Oh, there's someone here as well, isn't there? We forgot about this bit. Sorry, Dora. We gave you the right. I forgot you had a bit of planks going on there like that. And there you are. That's all lovely now. There you go. Stop moaning. <laughs> Ooh, hello, brush got stuck. I really fancy trying poutine, but I have no access to anyone that could ever make poutine or know what it is. I do want to try poutine at some point. Right, so that's that done. Uh, what is next? Next, we need to. There's nothing else to paint on there. However, on Puppy Dog's base, we have the new Coca Cola bottle. Eee, this could be interesting. So, what I'm going to do with the new Coca Cola bottle is make some shizzle up. I'm going to take some. Oosh. I'm going to drop some Ushabti bone. Now you might be thinking this is a bit weird, but I'm going to take some Ushabti bone 
as you can see, my entire workstation here has become just a mess of pots and everything in the way. It's just, I don't have an organized work style. You know that. Uh, where is my brush? I saw some shabti bone on the red pellet. A little bit. Uh, and if you're wondering, I'm going to paint this Ushabti bone. Apart from the fact it gives me a chance to say Ushabti bone, which is the best paint name ever. Let's move them out of the way. Move those out of the way. Uh, I shall explain in a moment. Uh, what's that brush doing down there? There's a brush down there for some reason. The first thing I'm going to do is get some Ushabti bone on the bottle. I really haven't planned how I'm going to do this. I don't know if this will actually work, but we will give it a try. Right, we're going to get some, to get my elbow in the wet palette bottle. I'm going to get some Shabti Bone on here first. Hope oh, more water in the paint. Hope oh, works. I'm not going to cover it completely. I'm not going to worry about missing bits. Get a rough coating on there. Not worry so much about the underneath area. Has it really done that? I'd never noticed that a new Coca-Cola bottle is kind of shaped like a rocket, rocket until just this exact moment right now. Kind of lame. Get the brush in there, but not hard to see where I'm putting the brush. Because there's a puppy dog in the way. Get out the way, puppy dog. So that's going to do. It's a very rough coat. Give it a bit of blast with fair dryer. your shabti bone on what i need to do next is go in with some ceramite white which is a base coat white's a very transparent color base coats tend to be a bit thicker and full of pigment than layer paints so get some ceramite white on there i did wonder how to paint this bottle because how do you paint an empty clear bottle on a solid model and it made me realize something else as well the one thing i wouldn't be sure when you get the the model of the Corvega, uh, the Corvega car, if you build it as not wrecked, it has the doors on and it looks fantastic, and you can paint all the windows black. If you build it as the wrecked out one with the doors off, the actual interior is solid, and I don't know how I would paint that. What? I don't know how I would paint the the, the interior of the vehicle as it's supposed to be hollow. I'm just going to go over the bottle again now with the white again i'm not looking for perfection here get white on it brush in there somehow without hitting 100 other things in the process Like that done. Hair dryer time. Hair dryer time. on there what we want to do now is have a quick look because somebody says he won't notice in the chat 
Chris says, hello, I forgot I've been playing Elite. He won't notice, says, uh, says Chris. Uh, you're on the naughty step. Yeah, I will notice everything. You haven't been here all day long. What magnifying glasses do you use, says Roberto Austria. Um, these ones. I don't know where I got them from or what they're called. There's no name in them. I think I got them on Amazon like seven years ago. They probably cost me like 5p or something. They did have a little extra little lens bit that you could drop down but to be honest it got on my nerves and in the way so i ripped it out uh, and it doesn't have replaceable lenses but it's just it's just that one plus i usually wear my reading glasses so i can see bsg says brian costello uh paul says i had poutine in wendy's in Ontario. it were bleeding rubbish need to try the real thing instead yeah wendy's yeah is an american chain for a start so you had american poutine in it in in canada i don't quite think that's a real thing it's a bit like going to tgi fridays and expecting real american food you don't you just get crap in the uk i didn't know this but tgi fridays in the uk has an american theme to it my brother was telling me if you go to TJ Fridays in Memphis, it's got a British theme to it. It's all underground signs and stuff. I'm like, okay. Right, next step. Uh, in this completely let's guess how to do a bottle, we're going to go in with a shade. And we're going to go in with Null Oil Gloss, which is, strangely enough, Null Oil, but gloss. And I don't know if this will work. It may not work. It may come out looking like absolute pap. Well, hey, I screw things up so you don't have to. All we're going to do is go over the bottle, thusly. And it is just null oil, but shiny. Basically null oil with the matting agent removed. Right, well, it comes out of gloss. So we're going to try and make this bottle look like maybe it has Nuka-Cola in it. The only way I can think to do this. A nice healthy coat of null oil gloss. And leave that to dry for a minute. We'll have to do several of these layers. So I might not get all that done on this particular stream. How long have we been going now? Uh, two hours, two minutes. Blimey, Riley. So I'll leave that to dry for a moment. While we're waiting for that to dry, what I shall do on the other ones... Because we're kind of done on there now, that's all we need to do. I should get them off their little grippy thing. The only thing we need to do now is find another cork. And a little bit of blue tack. A little bit of blue tack. I need to paint the edge of the base. Now be careful when you're doing resin kits like this because the base is resin. If you push this down too hard, you'll just break the base. Kind of wiggle it a bit. Right, it doesn't need to be super firm, just firm enough to be painted. So while that null oil is drying, first coat of it, what we need to do is get the outside of the base actually painted. And for this, already on my wet palette, I have some null oil, uh, some uh, Abaddon Black. Which has actually been on there for about about two days and it's still wet and usable. Hooray! What we're going to do for this is dead straightforward. We're just going to paint the edge of the base in black. You can do whatever colour you want. It depends on if you're playing on a on a board that's mostly, you know, green terrain, you could paint them green so they blend in a bit more. I'm just going to go for black. Because it's more visually striking. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to use the side of the brush rather than the point just to go up to the very edge of the base there and it just gives you this the, the neatest crispest edge possible without worrying about it too much if you go in with the point you'll be making a mess painting all over the landscape part but there is a visible edge so just go along and just brush over I have to nub there but never mind don't mind just for fun let's get the edges done here and if you use the flat of your brush rather than the point, it makes this a lot easier and a lot faster. Because the, the brush naturally, the paint naturally stops at the edge of the round bit, the edge of the plinth. It'll take a couple of coats, you won't get it all in one go, straight away. 
Uh, yeah. There is a super mutant. Yeah. Do the same on on the mute over here. Now he's got this edge here, and I don't want to get it on that bit of concrete, so I'm going to have to be a bit more careful here. But again, use the edge of the brush. Take the tip of the brush to where you want it to stop. Hopefully when your hand doesn't shake. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, at all times, when you're painting these guys, if you're painting it to be on your tabletop in your game, you're going to see them from a distance anyway. Not the end of the world if they're not super, super, super neat and crisp. Like that. Zip. Now I have thinned down the Abaddon Black a little bit with some water. It is a bit of a pig of a colour to use sometimes because it's... It can either be super dense or super patchy. And it does actually show brush marks quite easily. So I find it better to go in a bit thinner than normal. And then have to do more than one coat. It just works out neater. You get a smoother, matter layer as well. Painting the edges isn't hard. Be the second coat. So don't worry about underneath. Nobody cares about what goes on underneath. Oops. That. No good way to put him without him touching something. You uh. Well. The black of dog meat's base. And again, he's got a little lip there, so I'm going to be careful on this bit. And it's not it's not important that you be super neat because it's not the end of the world if it's a little bit rough around the edges. Whereas here, I can just get the brush flat, quite happily just go in and slap that on. It's not going to go over the edge because the brush isn't touching over the edge because you're using the edge of the brush. Mm -hmm. All sticking out now. But this is why using a wet palette is a brilliant thing. Because like I said, that black's been on the wet palette there for a couple of days. I've not had it in the fridge. It's just been sat on my desk. And uh, sat there doing nothing. And it's still workable. Add a little tiny bit of water and it's still completely workable. So yeah. Using a... Uh, Using a wet palette absolutely makes your life a lot easier. Happening in chat. Uh, feel free to pop me any questions in chat while I'm doing these painty bits. Because I can't really talk much, but I can keep a side eye on the, on the chat. Gives me something to talk about anyway, because I can't really talk about painting this very much, because I've just kind of explained it. Oops, hello. Did I get a paint on him then? No. Thought I knocked him with the paintbrush and got paint all over him. It does happen. But I didn't. Didn't sand her base very well, so she's got a bit of lumpy bits. Box, what do you use to light your work area? Says David Mayo. Uh, I have, not that I can show you. Uh, I have two desk LED lamps that have big flat things rather than lamps. They're just flat screens, LED screens. Uh, they're made by a company called Seiku, and good luck actually finding them anymore because they don't seem to exist. They're just like uh, LED lights that you can change the colour and the brightness, but they're flat panels rather than uh, picking out bulbs. And I also have a 
strip of LEDs that I just bought off Amazon, a big long strip with a plug on the end that I just have suspended above the work area for overhead light. And that's it. I've gone as best I can for daylight bulbs. Daylight LEDs, like five and a half thousand degrees or whatever they are, the temperature. Uh, just to get, so I'm not giving, so I'm not filming in like yellow light. I, I used to have different lights and they were all yellowy, so some of my older videos I'm telling the colour, they're all a bit weird. And I have got an angle poise lamp that's a daylight. It's a it's a ring shaped bulb with a clear bit in the middle with a magnifying glass in it. Uh, I have got that. I used to use for overhead, but it's very very bright. And to be honest, I actually tend to usually just have the camera mounted on that nowadays. I use it as an angle poise camera mount, which is fine. Because it just tends to get in the way more than anything else. And I just knocked the camera, so yeah, there's that. Of charge there for you. Uh, Dave says, you know, if they're bringing out any figures in power armor, yeah, they've got loads of them. Uh, Modifius.com forward slash Fallout. They've got uh, Wasteland Creatures, they've got Vault Dwellers, they've got Survivors, Settlers, they've got People in Power Armor, they've got Brotherhood of Steel. Group of Brotherhood of Steel dudes. They've got um, scenery items like Nuka Cola machines, tables, desks, computers, computer terminals, crates, and things like that. Uh, they've got super mutants. They've got loads wasteland creatures, death claws. Pretty much anything anything that's in Fallout Four, they've got. Uh, they're bringing them out in waves. I don't know what is in each wave. The first wave, which is out in May, includes these. Uh, super mutants and vault dwellers and puppy dog and some other bits they are going to send me some more figures when wave two is due out and over time they'll release more and more till everything's available pretty much uh, i'll if uh i'll put the link in the chat again i'll have to open it up again for you i know it won't be there if you scroll up Chat. Still here. I'm just doing a thing on the computer. You are. Are you? Uh. One second, chaps and chapesses. Doesn't come through as a link, unfortunately. Uh, Aviad Madar says, I'm itching to get a Procon Boy PS290. I know you had it for a while. Do you feel the fan head offer advantage of the actual finish for just a matter of convenience or speed? I'll be really honest with you. I had it for about a day. Uh, could, well, a few days, and I reviewed it, but I didn't get to use it a lot. It was fine. Uh, how, how much better is it than the brushes I've used every day for several years? I don't know. I only had it for a few days. Uh, it was fine. I couldn't... To really see anything wrong with it um nothing nothing would put me off getting it but it's not like i used it for weeks and months and i still got it or anything like that because I, I used it for a little bit and then sent it back it wasn't one i got to keep unfortunately it was like yeah can you review this brush for us and then send it back i'm like oh ass. so uh i don't it's it's it was fine it was oh, dropping things i found nothing offensive about it put it that way you probably want to ask someone who's used one for a more of a period of time to be honest nothing offended me about it particularly that i can remember i seem to remember it wasn't too keen on it seemed to do i can't remember because it was a while since i filmed it uh there may have been an issue with pressure with it it wasn't happy at lower pressures or higher pressures i can't remember i'd have to watch my own video again uh but yeah it was it was all right so we're doing some more normal on the bottle and what will happen is when this is actually dry and I've got several layers of this, what I'm hoping is it will darken the bottle down enough that it looks like there's Coke in it, Nuka-Cola, and then I can go in and 
put some more white on the top but it's going to take me a few coats of that and what i'm also going to have to do is put some matting agent around the bottom because it's going to pull up there and get all glossy i don't want that so we'll do that but i'm not going to do that on here because it's going to take me a while to get that done anyway so we'll keep i'll keep coming back to that but other than that uh i think we're pretty much done now folks uh i only wanted to keep it nice and simple a little bit of wood a little bit of gravel and dust nothing too complicated just real simple straightforward bit of dry brushing and washes just to make your bases look a bit more interesting than just whatever they were before so yeah i've got to finish that bottle yet so there's work to do on that uh, i'll figure that out later we'll be here for another hour we've been going for a couple of hours but that's going to do us um so if yeah if you're looking for hopefully this is just a way to show you if you're looking for real quick and simple ways to paint your to paint your miniatures that's what i've kind of been aiming for hang on i need to cough let me mute the microphone oh. Oh, sorry about that tickly cough yeah so looking for like quick and simple ways to paint your minis that's what I've kind of tried to show you in these in this in these builds you know you, you could spend a lot more time and go to a lot more effort to make more amazing museum quality paint jobs I'm not aiming this for, for those people I'm aiming this at people who like I said before they've just got the game they've never really painted miniatures they just want to get some nice quick paint jobs on there so they can get them on the table playing the game and making them look spectacular uh, and again you are going to see them from several feet away you know it's gonna be fine now in terms of varnishing these if you're going to play these in a game you want to go over them with a matte varnish to seal it in and to protect the paint from you handling it because the paint will just rub off however if i matte varnish these anything that's shiny like the metal armor and the guns will lose its shine now i've already painted those parts so the options for me are i'm going to just display these anyway they're not going to be used in the game so i can just go ahead i'm going to get some lamian medium which is the citadel's just shade without pigment in it basically it's matte and I will brush that over the areas that need to be matte and I'll leave the rest shiny. However, if you want to play these in the game, what you could do is you need to put a varnish on there to protect it. So you could matte varnish the whole thing and then go over the things that need to be shiny with some gloss varnish and just brush that on like some pledge. Or you could gloss varnish the whole thing and then just go over with some Lamian medium on the things that need to be not shiny uh, and that will matte them down. And that way you've got a protective model. Things that need to be shiny will stay shiny but you can go over with the Lamian medium for matte things. Uh, but if you're just doing them for display and not looking at ever handling them very often, it doesn't really matter. You could just leave them unvarnished if you want to keep it looking exactly as it is. Uh, if you've used Vallejo paints, you'll need to varnish them because their paints are quite shiny. Uh, but I think that's going to do us. I'll have a quick last round with the chat. I'll put my little, I'll put my little cobra there as well because that's another little tabletop miniature I painted. It's not really. Spes car, get in the way, puppy dog. Uh, what else have we got going on in the chat? Hey, let's have a look. Sorry, I'm late. Going back to the start to catch up, says uh, Red Yen 08. Uh, there's always something that turns up just as we get into the end. <laughs> Chris Smith, what's in the pot that you're cleaning your brush with? Uh, water. Just cold water. It's a little Citadel water pot. If you've not seen the, uh, the advert for it on the Warhammer TV website, go and watch it because it's hilarious. It's quite good because it's got little little recesses in the lid. So you can put a brush in there. Uh, let's find a brush. So you can you can put a brush in there. So it's not touching the bottom, but it's a good place to cut, hide your look at your brush in there if you need to soak it for a bit. I quite like the water pot. It's better than a cup. Uh, it's the Citadel pot thing, he says, Evil Monkey. Brian Castello, I keep thinking you're drowning every time you emphasize the drinking. I mean, like this. And I get my enormous cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. oh. Ah, it's so heavy that when I put it back on the desk, the camera shakes because it's a it's a big cut, but it's also a very wobbly camera. More moustache cleaning up. What Citadel paint would you recommend to get a dark blue? Uh, you could use. Have I got any here? Not. I've not got any here right here, but you could use. Uh, I've got to think what it's called now. There is the uh... oh god, what it's called now. Can't remember the name. But let me let me get for you the Citadel paint app. Hang on. I should tell you with words. Let me move this out of the way. 
Uh, oh, let's do it in colour, not black and white. So, Citadel Paint Tap. Let's do this live on camera, shall we? Live on telly. So. Blue. In fact, if you haven't got the Citadel Paint app, go and get the Citadel Paint app. It's free and it's fantastic. Uh, paint my colour. We want to do a blue. We want to do a dark blue. There's lots of different blues. And what it does is, it says, okay, I want to do a dark blue. Okay, here are some options. Uh, some of them have multiple options. Some of them just have one. And it gives you two ways of doing it, either layer paints or doing it as a dry brush. You get a slightly different effect. It tells you what colors to use. So for example, Cantor Blue is a nice dark blue by itself anyway, it's base paint. Now this is saying to do that kind of color scheme, which you can see there. It looks brighter on telly when you're watching it, it's actually darker in real life. You could start off with a layer of a uh, base coat of Cantor Blue, then go in with some Drakenhof Nightshade, which is a blue shade color. And then Al uh, Alatok Blue, which is an edge highlight and another edge highlight of Hoeth Blue. But if you just want the dark blue, you're not worried about the edge highlights. It's Cantor Blue and Drakenhof Nightshade. Or Cantor Blue might be dark enough in itself. When I did the Vault Suit on Nora, that was... Uh, what blue did I use on that? I used... What blue I use now? It might have been Calador Sky. I don't, you'd have to go back and check in the episode. It might have been Calador Sky. It was a very light blue colour. Uh, it's very, very light, bright blue colour. And then I went over it with the Drakenhof Nightshade as a, as a darkening shade. So uh, go and get yourself... I think it's on Android as well, but go and get yourself the Citadel Paint app. It is a fantastic application because it really does kind of tell you every colour you want. Not speed, no on that. Just tell you kind of every colour you want. So whether you're doing oranges, yellows, blues, greens, bone. You've got some great different ways of doing bone. You've got bone and ivory parchment, rotting bone and ancient bone. And you can also, it's not got a massive list, but you can also do it by miniature. So you're saying, right, I need to paint. A beast of Nurgle, what are the colour schemes? And it will go through and each one, each area has a different colour. So for example there, it might say, right, this bit is supposed to be move. How do I do move? Click on that and it tells you all the colours to use. So I find this paint app absolutely invaluable. Plus, not only that, you can knock your figures over, you can also have an inventory. I spent an hour the other day going through all, it lists all the different paints, all of them. And I spent an hour going through my paint collection, marking off the ones I've got and marking off the ones I needed. So, and you can see you've got, you've got an inventory, which is the ones you actually have. All these colours are ones I've got in my collection. And on your wish list, you've marked them as I need these colours, it will list the ones you need. So you go into the store, get your wish list, you say I need that, that, that and that. Pick them up, mark them as got, add them to your inventory and you're done. So it's a good way to track what paints you've got. If I get a kit and it says you need to paint this thing with... Let's say it says, right, you need to paint this thing with um, Gulliman Blue. So I go, okay, have I got Gulliman Blue? I don't know. Do I need to go and get it from the shop? Uh, e, F, G, Gulliman Blue. Yes, I've got Gulliman Blue. It's in my inventory. So, yeah. One of the reasons I love Citadel Paints is they're an absolute, they are the absolute best paint to brush paint with by far. By bar none, not come across yet. I know others are available. I've not come across yet a paint I like painting, brush painting with as much. Uh, but also the paint app is fantastic. Because if you think, I want to paint something red, you can go into the app and look at different red schemes. Say, right, well, I fancy this one. So let's let's use these colours. And you, can, you don't have to do that. But it, it gives you a starting place. It takes the thinking out of painting. If you're just learning how to brush paint, it takes the thinking out of it. You basically do it. Uh, I just got some Windsor & Newton matte varnish to test out. I hope it works well as it's a decent price compared to sprays and Vallejo varnish, says Phil East. Apparently it is quite good. Uh, what's the baking paper called for wet palette? It's baking parchment paper. If you live in the US, you can get it everywhere. If you live anywhere else, it's a ball egg. You have to go on Amazon. It's baking parchment paper. I went through Sainsbury's and Asda and everywhere else. Couldn't find any, so I got it on Amazon. Uh, nah, nah. Cantor Blue, says Evil Monkey. Yeah, thinking right. That's the one you get from uh, Fox Cantor Blue, says says Paul. Yes, I, I, I kind of got there in the end. I just couldn't remember the name of it. 
I got mine from Amazon Predator is Mason Cash Parchment. Oh, actually, that's funny enough, that, because... So's mine. Mason Cash Parchment. Good on camera, dear. Where's the camera? Mason Cash Parchment. You get a little roll of it, but it lasts for ages. I've had it for about a year now. Um, other brands are available, of course. And if you live in the US, it's common. You go into any, super, any supermarket and I'll sell it. Uh, it costs about a fiver for that roll. And that roll lasts me years. Uh, does it exist as a spray as well? Uh, Cantor Blue. Let's have a look. Let's go back to the Citadel Paint app yet again. Trust me, it really is an awesome tool. You need to get it. This is all the paints. Uh, was it Cantor Blue? E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Cantor Blue Base. Cantor Blue Air. No, they only have it as, as uh, base paint, like one of these, or an air paint, which is a, it's just a thin paint, basically, so you can airbrush it straight without mixing it, theoretically. Uh, we can filter it by sprays. Spray. I have to make the noise, it's, it's kind of required. So, sprays. What do we have? Blue wise, we have McCrag Blue, which is your default uh, Ultramarines Blue. It's not the darkest, but if you sprayed it with McCrag Blue with a rattle cam and then did a shade of Drakenhof Nightshade, that will darken it up quite nicely. Uh, and they've got the Fang, which is like a blue grey sprays. So, McCrag Blue will be your sprays. There's not a massive range of sprays, but they are really good. I have to make the noise. It is in my contract. There you go. So, yes. Uh, what else happened, chat? Does it, uh, what are you chat folks doing? Ooh, there's loads of chat. I missed it. Let's have a look. Uh, Philly says, yes, it was five quid for about 10 by 25 uh, meters, which is the Mason Cash part. Yeah, it's about five for that Mason Cash stuff. It's really good. And it's just the right size for a sandwich box lid. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I typically use that much for a model maybe maybe two of those depending on how messy i get if there's lots of tiny little things i'm painting you need little bits but you can see how much i've used there i'm quite messy with it but yeah it's a fiver it'll last you for years uh let's have a look predator 4242 says i'm finishing my space wolves army and i've got 30 troops to paint so i need a wet palette yep dead simple get yourself a sandwich box use the lid because it's not deep get yourself a sandwich box Get or any kind of thin plastic Tupperware box where you've got a lid. Get one with a seal on it so it's airtight. Kitchen roll, parchment paper, soak it, drain the water off, everything's damp. Kitchen roll maintains the water. The parchment paper's semi-permeable, uh, so it lets a little bit of water through and keeps things nice and moist. When you finish for the day, you put it back on again. The seal keeps the air in, stops air getting out, stops the water evaporating away. Put it in the fridge, bring it back out. Your paint is still workable. That black has been on there for about three days. So, and it's still workable. And that's just been sat in my room, not even in the fridge. So, a wet palette will cost you about a fiver. Do, 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 do. Chris at Grace Model says he got mine from his from Amazon, his parchment paper. Couldn't find it in the shop. No, I couldn't find it anywhere. Most of the Games Workshop paints I have, I don't exist any longer. They are like from 20 years ago. They sorted, they changed the paint range in 2013, I think, or 2012. If you go online and do a search for Citadel Paint Conversion or anything like that, there is a there is a, a thing out there where it lists all the old paints and all the new paints. But most of the kits now give you new paints. But again, go and get yourself the Citadel Paint app and you'll know what the new paints you need are and you can just make it up. Oops. Oh, with the falling and the, and the knocking and the... Oh. Hello. Uh, I'll sort you out, says Brian Costello. Uh, oh, the Preston Garvey one will be nice, challenging to paint. Yeah, that's the thing with Preston Garvey is Citadel haven't got any tutorials or anything on there for sort of, you know, African-American skin. So and you'd have to kind of research into what colours to use. It would be interesting to do that. Most of the most of the skin colours in Citadel Workshop in Games Workshop is like Caucasian skin. So they have some like slightly darker skins in there. So have a look actually. I don't think anything that would fit for Preston Garvey. Let's have a look and see. Flesh. Oh, they do dark flesh. Yeah, it might work. You could vary that. You've got Rhinox Hide, Doomble Brown, and Tusk Gore Fur. 
Although there's no actual shade on that, which is interesting. Yeah, that would kind of work. Pale blue flesh is weird. Pink fungus. Yeah, I hate when I go to the shops and I'm rocking a pink fungus look. Just it's not, it's not right. Pink fungus, Cygnus in disguise. They've got medium flesh, pale flesh, and dark flesh. That's about the three. You get tanned flesh. I look like that when I was tanned. I'd be a bit worried. Yeah, it would be interesting uh, to paint that colour scheme. Uh, let's have a look. Hello, Fox. Hello, Fall, says John Bias. Hi, John. We're just about to finish in a minute. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, the old Citadel paints kind of still exist. Coat de Arms makes them. Yeah, Coat de Arms, um, I think they used to make the Citadel paints, so they kind of still make them. Give them different names. Uh, but a lot of the new Citadel paints are still the same same thing. They're just slightly different shades. Uh, I'll do Preston Garvey lay that with his head removed, I think. Dave, yeah, I think that's required. Another settlement needs your help. Add some dark skin, guys. Use a violet shade. I googled it. Oh, sorry. I, I did some darker skin, guys. I used a violet shade. I googled it. Yeah. Uh, I've still got Dave Barkers. He's got vermin fur and lightning bolt blue. Yeah, you've, you've got things like uh, bolt gun. What were they called? The old uh, lead belt she used to be like bolt gun metal or something. Yeah. The good thing is now, it's like I say, it's, it's just great. I, I love the fact. I love the fact that all the names are really dumb. When I first started using Citadel Paints, I'm like, what are these names all about? It's ridiculous. Once you get to understand the lore and the characters and the story behind it, they kind of make a lot of sense. But I'm still going to rib, rib them mercilessly, I think. Endlessly, because it's dead fun. Uh, but they are just... I've not, I've not yet brushed a paint that, I've, that has been so forgiving as Citadel Paints. To me, a paints are absolute gash to brush unless you get it exactly right, so I can't be bothered. Vallejo Paints, they're all right to brush. They're a bit too shiny, and the metallics kind of suck because the surface tension is and they don't really take very well so i've not enjoyed painting with those that much uh ammo paints they're fine to brush they're just not as forgiving as um the citadel ones they they can brush on all right but again they have like the vallejo they can be a bit shiny sometimes the citadel paints can't fault them i've never had a bad experience i used to not brush paint because when i used to try brush painting with tamir it was so bad that it put me off trying to brush paint and I stopped trying to brush paint for many many years uh, and it's the same thing about using an airbrush if you get a crappy airbrush and you, it doesn't work very well oh carnage if you use a crappy airbrush and it doesn't work very well you'll be put off doing airbrushing but because you'll think it's your fault but it's not it's the it's the airbrush same with paints if you try and brush paint with a paint that's not designed for brush painting you'll think you can't brush paint and you won't do it and that's why I did uh, but then when I got the Citadel paints, because I was doing a, I decided to try Warhammer build, and it was like, wow, I can actually brush paint. It's brilliant. So, yeah, give them a go. Ignore it in a bit. She's way off in the background there. Uh, right, quick last whiz through the uh, chat. Well, pineapple, says Ghost Lyle. I still don't know what this pineapple thing's going on here. Uh, dude, Gunmetal, says uh, Dave. Yeah, still got that. Smelly Primer was the best... Old GW paint name, <laughs> Smelly Primer. Uh, I think Flash Gets Yellow is quite a good name. Forge World actually have a conversion chart for them paints. Just found it. Yeah, just do a Google search for like um, Citadel paint range conversion chart. There is a big like image you can download that's got all the most of the old paints and what the new ones are called. There are actually some that aren't mapped across because there are new paints that weren't didn't have an old. Ravel Aqua Paints Brush Nicely, says Tony. Never tried them. Tony has. Uh, Tony over at Helcom 3.5. I see quite like them. Wouldn't it be funny to see the meetings come up with those names? What about Metal Burper? No, Nigel, that's not quite right. The only problem paint I have a problem with is White Scar. It seems chunky. Yeah, it's a base paint. Base paints are very thick and stodgy, and white is a bore leg to paint with because white's quite a transparent colour. So just make sure you thin it down with your water and you should be all right. Yeah, white's always an arse to paint. No matter what brand of paint you use, white's always the worst possible brand of paint to use. Uh, colour of paint. Oh, well, actually, I say that. There is a worse paint. Your real yellow. My least favourite Games Workshop paint because that is just horrible. It's just because it's so transparent. You have to put so many layers on to get it to not be trans. Even if you put, like, white underneath it or a cream colour, it's just or you do Avalanche Sunset underneath it. It's like, oh, I don't like this colour. Hmm. I've just been looking. I still have wash bottles from 1980, says Dave. Wow. Yeah. 
you might want to get yourself some modern shades they can't beat the modern shades anyway folks i think that's going to do us i'm going to just cause some problems now because i'm going to ruin this scene of tranquility by putting jar jar bleeding binks which is his official name his, his middle name is actually bleeding jar jar bleeding binks in there just to make me angry in fact the super mutant is actually shooting jar jar in fact so is so is nora and dog meets growling at him because everybody hates jar jar yeah he's going well i've got no clothes on Chris. Anyway, I think that's going to do us because we've been going for Christ on a stick. Two hours, 35 minutes. Uh, I'll go off and finish that bottle, that paint bottle. Um, but other than that, the bases are pretty much done. Again, just a real quick way to paint your bases. No thinking required. Bit of dry brushing, bit of shades. Nice and simple for the absolute beginners. But that's going to do us. Thank you so much for watching to everybody. And to everybody who was in chat, thank you very, very much. Um, don't forget... These are out in May, this first wave of figures and a load of others. Uh, Modifius.com forward slash Fallout. Uh, the game comes out in May with the first wave of figures and things. Uh, and then they're releasing more waves after that. So do go along, get your pre-order in now. Uh, because they'll do all the pre-orders first on the launch date. They'll, they'll fulfill all those and ship them out. And then they'll start dealing with all the other orders that come in after that point. So if you want to make sure you get them as close to launch date as possible, go pre-order them. And big thanks to the guys at Modifius for sending me these. Because um, they're brilliant. They are beautiful little figures. Again, take your time with them. They are resin. It's not plastic. You've got to be a bit more careful. Uh, but just have a good fun with them. And if you've never painted miniatures before, hopefully these last three or four episodes that I've done have helped you kind of get a feel for painting them. In a, in a straightforward and simple way, not too complex, that will just get your painted miniatures on the table. And then you, from there you can start working on your techniques, getting more complicated, getting more detailed, building them up even more and even more. So thank you so much to everyone who's watching. If you're watching this live, thank you for being in the chat, guys. Um, Philly says, Later, Fox, thanks for the stream idea for a nice Sunday chill. Yeah, now you just need to get to the, to the pub and have a load of, like, Sunday session pints and then get home for a roast dinner. Yeah, now I really want a roast dinner. <sighs> anyway, that's going to do it. Thank you very much to everybody who watched. If you're not watching it live, thank you anyway. Thank you for watching along. I will see you soon, because now these are done. I need to get back to the... Imperial, and I've just got tissue on it. The go away. The Imperial Skitter. And yes, I do know what that means to my Scottish followers. I didn't know that when I came up with the word. Um, the Imperial Skitter, which is for the E models build, so I need to start on a video of that. We've got to do a little bit of weathering, then we've got to do a diorama, and we've got to paint the figures that are going to go with it. So that will be the next project coming up. Uh, well, next thing to get back on, so that should be hopefully the next few days. Who else have we got to go? I can't remember. We've got to go with that now. Got some dudes that go with the skitter anyway. We've got our arms. There you go. Getting packed on here now. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Uh, once this is done, and I say I've got to do a diorama. So it's going to be a while. Once this is done, the diorama's done, and all the figures are done, and it's all finished. Um, apart from the fact I need to drive up to models to drop it off. Uh, we will get on with the Master Grade Strike Rouge Uotori. That is the next one coming up after this. So yes, as I've said many times, don't panic. Gumpler's not gone anywhere. I'm not going to build exclusively Gumpler forever. I'm going to make other things as well. But I'll always go back to Gumpler. So stay tuned for that. But it'll be a while because I've got to do all this stuff. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's my long wrap-up done. I'll get rid of him, can I? Thanks. That's my long wrap-up done. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, pineapple. What is this pineapple thing going on? I don't know.